Let me go ahead and start right off by saying you slipping, right? How I'm slipping, Sanchez, I'm going to show you how you slipping, right? If you fuck with my work and you ain't got my new documentary, Yahweh the Conceiver, you sleeping on your boy. And you don't think it's worth the 45, man. But I'm telling you right now, it's five hours of straight up mind blowing syncretism. So let me plug that in at the beginning of the show. And then with that out the way, we can go ahead and get into the bill with no further ado. If you like any other beats you heard, get in the video description or just go to my website and scroll down. I'll show you what to do right now. Matter of fact, just go to more, go to music and beats. And you can start shopping right here, man. If you see a beat you like, hit the plus sign. What kind of lease you want? Boom, click on it. Go from there. See what I'm saying? But anyway, let's talk about it. So my thumbnail that I chose for the day, let me flip back to that real quick. I mean, really, my lecture is over right now. Thank you all for showing up. You can just stare at this for five seconds. And guess what? There go my lecture is over. Holla at y'all. Thank you. But, but tell the truth, though. I want everybody to do this for me. Drop a one in the chat room right now. If you can look at this by itself and pretty much know where we're going. And that's what I try to do, y'all. I don't get into mysticism, right? Now, let me share some with y'all getting right into this. Yeah, go ahead and let me know what you think, you know. Now, there's a such thing as something called an anguiped. If you don't know what an anguiped is, I'm going to go ahead and show you what that is now. Now, let's do a quick review. An uh, anguiped, right? Angu means snake. Ped means foot. Snake foot is a kind of divinity that is often found on magical amulets from the Greco-Roman period and is characterized by having serpent legs. And one thing I want to share with you is here is an example of an anguiped. And uh, I have other examples for you before we go too deep into what we're going to get into here. One of them being Abraxas. Abraxas is another anguiped. Now, a lot of people may say, where you going, Sanchez? Bear with me. I got you. I got you. Now, watch this, right? Anguipeds, because before I go deep with this, now that we got a brief description of what an anguiped is, it's important for me to share with everybody that the God of all world religions is an anguiped. What do you mean, Brother Sanchez? A serpent leg deity. Let's look at more anguipeds. Do we see Yahweh on the far right? Y Yahweh is a variated form of the anguiped where they, they got rid of the serpent legs and they just wrapped them up in a serpent, right? And if you want to think that this is just exclusive to Yahweh of somehow I'll give you another anguiped, his name is Buddha. And Buddha don't got legs. He got serpent legs. I want to show you what an anguiped is before we start going too deep with this because all around the ancient world we see anguipeds. These are snake leg deities, and I can go on and on and on about the many anguipeds. In fact, let me share with you one more just so we can understand this is not no exclusive thing. Here is a deity called Socles, which is another uh, uh, equivalent of the Demiurge and indeed an anguiped. When we talk about serpent legs, here is a bull called Moloch and the rings that you see, okay? For the legs makes this deity here an anguiped, which is no different than Buddha here. So I want to give you guys, I want to open up already with some sacred geometry to get you going in a certain way where you can understand something here about anguipeds. And then I'm going to tie it all together in a minute to let you know why I brought all that up. Let's look at some more anguipeds. Check this out. So 
in the bottom right corner, this is a Hindu Nagini, and you can see his head has legs of a serpent wrapped them himself all the way up in them. And then we have a god above him by the name of Saturn, right? which is an anguiped, and I know what you're thinking. Well, where's the serpent legs? It's the same concept of you don't have a bottom half. You're just an upper torso because you're representing the Taurus field. There's a reason, right, that we have uh, the famous images of people, right? It's called a what? A bust. This is called a bust, and it's dealing with the upper body. And you only get the upper body. But why is this is important? Because a bus gets its name from literally the concept of just symbolizing the upper body has everything to do with people busting through the waters above. Busting, you know, through the waters above. Rip, which is to death, be born again as this sort of Nagini creature that can spring up to the heavens or whatever, as we can see here. And this is basically deities representing the mind exiting the body, busting through. And, and, and how that look is when you're standing up in the waters of baptism, right? When you have this lower half hidden, buried away as if you're rising up out of the waters above and waters below or the ripples. It's what this all symbolized, a bus busting up from, and these are, became a famous way to portray a person that died because not just because they was cheap and didn't want to do the bottom half, but the first concept of busting, creating a bust of a person goes back to the spiritual system of one literally being deified out to death and placed in a position that they, they sold to symbolize what they soul was going to go through. As above, so below. So your bus represented the eternal you statued and forged on earth in the form of metals to live on for generations after the next one. But in the spiritual realm, you literally are a bus. Think of how a serpent moves on its belly. So this is talking about the people that can access the waters above and the waters below. And the more we bust through the layers, the more we become multiple dimensional, able to access each layer we, we bust through. So um, check this out, right? The, it's, you know, a bust is there for a reason, just to, we don't have to beat that horse. So just a lot of concepts I want to go over real quick. So check this out, right? Check this out, right? So, um, and I'm, I'm going to go and let you know right now. I'm going to be all over the place today, but, but I'm going to stay on track. So back to the anguipeds. Now we know what we're dealing with, right? So the anguiped, why does it have serpent legs? Well, I'm not really ready to expose that yet. I am going to, and I think many of you know why. But I just want to show you some more anguipeds that you might not be familiar with. What people need to realize is that Jesus is an anguiped. And there's a reason why this image of Jesus right here has serpent legs. Yeah, this is, this is at the Vatican. This is what they worship. And we can see the goat. What the hell is that? Now, how the hell does people sit up there and worship that and think that that's Christ? Let me go ahead and pull up. What's up with all this serpent symbolism? Hmm? Why did Moses re uh, have a bronze serpent? Okay, so we finna go into something. You see how Jesus' legs is nailed together like that? Right? It's a reason why they nail Jesus' legs together like that. You know why? Jesus was originally a serpent leg deity like that genie. Jesus was a Nagini. Jesus is an anguiped. The reason Jesus' legs is wrapped like that is because before Christ, you literally had a serpent on that cross. I'll show you Adam right now. Check it out. Look at Adam's legs. Adam is an anguiped. 
What is an anguiped? A serpent leg deity for the most part. We can get into the rest of it later, which I'm about to. But I just want to get you familiar with it. A serpent leg deity, and damn it, why, Sanchez, why are all of these gods anguipeds? For, before I answer that, let me go ahead and just drive this thing home about why I said Jesus is an anguiped, all right? Before Jesus, people simply worshipped the serpent. The Bible tell you that the world was corrupted. They all worshipped the serpent. But see, what they didn't tell you was that when the Christian order back in the day says something was corrupt, it was only dealing with a biased view from the church. It, you know, that meant it was anti-Christian. So think about this, right? Um, why was it corrupt to worship the serpent? Because the church order came along and they started to personify the serpent as people and that's how you ended up with all of these anguipeds. Because what, when the church conquered your land, remember what the Bible told you. Everybody was worshiping the serpent on the earth. You see, this was during Moses' time. Moses even worshiped the serpent, the Nahushtan, or the rod of Asclepius. Why was that a problem to the church? Now, the church, listen, what did the church do? The church came along and introduced us to these so-called healing gods. And ever since then, it's been so much disease on the earth and plague on the earth. Now, when everybody was worshiping the serpent, we was healed. The serpent staff is the original medical symbol. Someone replaced themselves, the serpent, which is the sine wave, the kundalini, because the ancient form of healing was through sound waves. And we turned that into some dumb crap in the church today. Speak your stuff, stuff into existence. Speak yourself healed and you'll be healed. But the concept of sound healed in the body was dealing with cymatics and tonal vibrations. That And there's a, for every virus and disease, there's a tone or a frequency in the universe that can kill it. And this is simply as dialing it up and knowing what we're dealing with. It's so many forms of healing in the world and approaches to uh, healing the human body and the ancestors were so advanced that they had a lot of non-invasive ways to heal some of the most complex anomalies uh, dealing with simple sound and, and different uh, charged water and all of that and that became the holy water in the church and these kind of concepts but the original healing concepts were hidden behind brazen image graven images uh, often copper or brass gods carved in copper or brass because these copper and brass gods like Moloch and Christ, Buddha, and uh, etc., they were the false healers or the Antichrist because prior to them, we simply applied the copper itself to the womb. And if you think I'm lying, I'm flying because I, I always tell you now, they're still using copper for healing now. Watch this. Copper and brass is used for healing. Because, and when they took us away from chemi chemistry, alchemy, dealing with the metals, dealing with the earth, Gaia, the mother, mother, and see connecting with, with, with all of the things that's here that we can benefit from, and we became detached from that, and we got on medicines, and we went away from natural and, and, and see, because they separated spirituality from biology, but the ancestors say your spiritual state is a direct reflection of your physical state. And most of your physical ailments come from some spiritual problem. And we don't really get to the root of our ailments, which is what they want to happen. That's by design because it's like a dope game. I got to keep selling you meds. Right. And we already know how that game go. I can't say too much about that because, look, they censor you, too. That's a mafia. But anyway, so we understand that cop is healing. We originally had Tibetan bowls that we would eat from. It would charge your food and all that. Put a vibration on it. Ring the bowl that the charge that salad up or whatever. And this is real stuff. And um, 
that people turn their nose up at today, but they won't turn their nose up at a person on their knees in the church praying to Jesus to heal their high cholesterol. Knowing that this pagan God ain't got no power, it's the false Christ. That ain't no false science, though. But when you go to getting into all this stuff, then, you know, there's a, 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 a group of agencies out there to combat it. So, again, this was the first form of Christ. And what this represent is the Kundalini energy, which is the chi energy, the soul energy. That is the foundation of your physical energy. The spiritual world dictate what happens on, in the physical world. And if you want to heal the physical body, why not? Let's start dealing with this spiritual realm where the body is projecting itself from if we want to deal with the source. Again, we just saw now while Jesus' uh, legs is crossed this way because Jesus is just a Nagini. We don't really pay attention to the serpent imagery in religion, which is why I wanted to bring it up and familiarize you with it before I go ahead and tell you what it is, which I think you already knew anyway, was that the uh, whole concept of the serpent legs and why they made deities with serpent legs is to uh, personify the pineal gland. So um, as we can see the pineal gland, if we look at this little black space in the brain, we can see how we get the image of God, right? And that the word God is indeed the word guide when we start thinking of it from this perspective, because it's not really Jesus that's that's guiding us or the God. Remember that a God is simply a guide. A God is that which drives you, that which leads you, your driving force. To some is crack cocaine. To some is money. To some is Jesus. To some is Allah, whatever it is that drives you will become your God. It'll lead you to. Now, if you didn't create the God or the God, you will never get to where you going. What will happen is you will keep worshiping this object or this thing outside of you as a God, and it'll lead you to where it wants you to go. And the whole while it's leading you there, it'll tell you, I'm a mysterious God. Don't question me. Trust me. I know the way to the promised land. Don't lean into your own understanding. And that is just what somebody would tell sheep that they finna march to the slaughterhouse up ahead. So my thing is this right here. Before we had gods, we had guides, and everyone had their own guide before everyone had their own religious god. These gods rule over us in corporate groups that only benefit the pastor, and it keeps you tithing and God-fearing instead of self-loving. Now check this out, right? What really is a tragedy is that we're taught that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And then someone will come tell you to lean not into your own understanding and let the mind of Christ be in you. And he, one ought to ask themselves, who's ever telling me that can't be my true creator? Why? My true creator created a mind. My true creator gave me a mind that I can be able to have the ability to think for myself when all fails. I'm going to tell y'all something right now, right? If I didn't have the ability to think for myself, I'd be dead right now. Because there's so many friends that I know that didn't have that ability. They went along with the crowd and things ain't turn out right. And now a lot of people that find themselves saved out of, out of deep situations and scenarios, they will thank God. But Sanchez tell you, I'm here today to thank God. A lot of people need to pat themselves on the back and that'll give them the power. But yet they on their knees crying to a sky daddy that ain't done nothing for them and they owe themselves all the credit. Why? Not because they're egotistical, but it just shows how great we are. We can't greet each other by saying, what up, God? What up, goddess? Even Jesus told you, ye are gods. So a god don't, don't, don't uh, a move like 
uh, uh, a servant. So check this out, right? Before we had God, we had the most high, which is the mind over matter. And it sits over the material world. Now let's go back to these anguipeds because when we look at my, my point that I'm making here with the sacred geometry, right? Let's go back to it. Here we go. And there's another one called Abraxas. I think that brought him up. A lot of people like Abraxas. So let's pull, pull him up. Yeah, I put them up over here. Now look, Abraxas got a rooster head and serpent legs. Why would they do that? Look at this image, y'all. Look at the pineal gland. Can y'all see that beak on him? He got a rooster head. Look at that. This pineal gland dude, the black dude in the brain here, he literally got a rooster head and serpent legs. Like the ancestors was so blatant. All you got to do is open up your eyes. You can connect with them. It ain't a bunch of spookism that the uh, mystic priests of today want you to get involved with, right? So one thing we got to realize is that this deity is in between the sun and moon. And I'm about to tell you something today that's going to sound real crazy, but I don't care. I'm going to give you the ancient truth, whether you take it or not. Now watch this. The split that's in between your brain, that is literally the North Pole. That's personified as a god called the crease, because a split is a crease. What is the word crease? The Christos, the Christ which is the word crease, a split, an opening, is what the Christ is personifying. It's the center point where there's a split in between the past and the future, and that represents the present, where if you rearrange those words, you get the serpent. Now, who is the serpent? That's me and you. That's the kundalini. That's who we are. See, the present, what you call in the present, the past, the future, check this out, right? This thing that you call in the present, you got to ask yourself, is the present a person, place, or a thing? Is all of that in one? It's called Santa. It's a place called the North Pole. It's a person called you and me that they personify as Santa, which is center, the center of the self, the core self, the observer. Who is that? The mind, not the body. Mind over matter, remember? We not our bodies, we're the mind. Where is the mind is the question. When you cut the brain open, you don't see the mind because the mind is where all compasses is pointing at, the middle of the earth. I'm serious. Now I'm finna go real deep and show y'all some shit that's really crazy. They personified our consciousness as a genie, a serpent tail deity that's green. And you see the genie leaving the lamp, right? Let me show you something. Here is a real picture in nature of the genies leaving the lamp. You can't make this stuff up, y'all. The ancestors said each one of these streaks of light is a soul going home. The earth is a big lamp. And when we die, we become a streak of the northern lights getting up out this bitch, y'all. I'm not making this up. When yo, Let me show you what your consciousness is real quick. Watch this, right? Here is what your consciousness is. And in the hospital, they got the little green line that say if you're alive or not. When you're in the hospital, when you flatline, you know. If you're alive, that green line look like a snake. But when the snake energy leaves the body, this green line turn into a flat line. You know why? This little squibbly design, it represents the true self. It represents the kundalini. This green line life, <clears throat> the life force in you, when it leaves you, this little snake will leave this screen. And it'll go off, it'll go off and be a streak in the sky as, a, as one of these. And it'll leave the lamp. And it'll go into another body in another realm, into another lamp. This is the core self. These deities was never objects in the heaven outside of us. This was the, the core energy within us personified to teach us about the self. Let's take a quick break if the dogs get too loud. But anyway, there's an Egyptian form of this god, cannabis, called Serket. 
and she personifies this same concept in the form of a serpent, as you can see. This is the hook, the candy cane representing the North Pole. You can do it as a serpent too, right? All of this is talking about the same one that is the serpent which crawls on the belly. This is the same concept, even with circuit. Now, a circuit is what? Dealing with energy. A circuit. All right? Now, check this out, right? So, it's so much I want to go into. Leaving the lamp is something I want to go into real quick right now about uh, Yahweh, right? Hold on a second. Let me get my screen. I'm going to stay organized today. Stay organized, man. So check this out, right? Um, what was I? So yeah, so the consciousness leaving the lamp, and that's what all this stuff represents right here. And uh, as you can read right there on the collage, the demiurge, all of them is all the same thing. And, and I'm just trying to be redundant before I move on and make sure I got everything from the anguiped section. And then we finna move on. Yeah, I think that's everything. Let's move on. So um, the next thing I want to talk about, right? How many of y'all are familiar with this concept called the headless horseman? The headless horseman. Um, drop a one if you are familiar with it. I'm going to make a lot of connections today. I'm going to make a lot of connections today. How many of y'all, let me, let me go ahead and pull up. Maybe they got some imagery of it. So there's a, there's this concept. Hey, anybody typing in anything besides what I got going block. Matter of fact, let me, let me do something real quick, bro. I'm going to give y'all a warning first, man. But listen. I do my own thing, man. I got my shit going on right now with my Yahweh presentation, and I'm making money, and I'm feeding my people something that's worthwhile. We know the fucking earth flat. Can't nobody knock me off my square and make me move when they motherfucking want me to move. So, look, be on what I'm on, though, out of respect, though. I'm on this right now. So ask the Hebrews is they going to debate me about Yahweh. Because that's what I'm on right now, and I was first. My beef was first. I was on this before they brought that white boy to the table. So, he, you know, the, everybody know I'll debate that any time, but I ain't going to let them stop what I got going with my presentation that I'm promoting. And I ain't no fool. I see what's going on, man. Like, I know how they play over there, and I'm going I'm to I'm keep doing what I got to do, and they'll wait till I get ready. straight up like I'm a fool people people value my information what I look like stopping doing what I'm doing to go split up some debate money with all them macho man Randy Savage nigga I'm not in a hurry for that bro I'm a boss and I'm eating over here baby we eating thank you to my people y'all support me so well Yeah, man, everywhere I show up, I can get 1K people in the building on any of my channels. They fuck with me. That's why. Man, don't get me uh, uh, crunk. For, let, let me get back with my teaching, man. Real talk. Like I was saying about the headless horseman, though. The headless horseman is basically how the mind, the body, right, is the horse. But the horsemen, that's the mind. So the concept of like the, the, the headless horseman, I'm going to show you some old artwork of Yahweh real quick. And I got a lot of slides. Just stay with me real quick, man. We finna go real deep. 
Uh, here's an image of Yahweh. All this headless horseman stuff is talking about, and even in Freemasonry, how they ride the goat. How they ride the goat and all that, the headless horseman. I just want to make a lot of connections for y'all because the one that's riding the goat is this dude in the brain. So there go a picture of Yahweh. There go a picture of Neph. And there's Shamash, which is Kimash as well. Shamash. And there go El again. So we only dealing with the mind, people. And this is my smoke. I'm not going to let nobody ignore this shit, bro. This is powerful information. Our people out there worshiping sky daddies, your grandmas, aunties, niggas is waiting on some sky dude when really they dumbing us down because the power of our mind, our savior is going to rise up in the next generation of children that's doing more critical thinking than we are. It ain't going to be in the generation that's doing the most praising and praying. So I'm giving you the truth, people. How people don't value that. Like how it, all of the numbers come out for the life of the Creflos and all them. This was about you. So that's what I'm saying. Let's get back to this. The headless horseman, right? That is literally dealing with the doggone uh, pineal gland, the mind. And the body is the horse. Again, and, and I ain't going to go too deep with this, but I'm going to show you a picture of it, too. Look, you see how he raising his hands up like that? Now, look at this. Look at, look at your pineal gland, right? Now, the body is his horse. But look, the pineal gland ain't got no head, though. Now, it's so tricky because some people will look, some people will take this little bitty cut right here, and they'll make it a rooster beak. And now you get a Braxus, the rooster-headed snake dude that I showed you. Some people, they won't even acknowledge this little main vein right here. And so you don't get the Braxus. You get this dark, headless horseman creature with his arms just like Yahweh. You see, look at him. This is another form of Yahweh or the reaper. Because what does the reaper do? The reaper slices with the blade. And what is another form of the reaper? Mama Kali, what is she doing? Slicing the head off. What color is she? All black. What do her arms look like? Just like the headless horseman. Look at here. See, if I say that I'm a syncretist, I got to be the one to make all the meticulous, intricate connections. That's my thing. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a do it, man. And so this is another form of the reaper, the headless horseman. And instead of riding a horse, she's stepping on top of the dead body. She ripped herself up out the dead body. But see that hook, right? That's the Santa Claus thing concept. North Pole. You see, you can see the sky opened up around her. There's a sky vault, all that stuff. And you see the same concept here with the headless horseman. And again, let's go back to the pineal gland. We can see that this was all about us, y'all. And it was all personifying and teaching about how the mind is using the body as a vehicle or an avatar. Okay, so all of those little rays of light you see around Yahweh, those are the neural highways is spanning outward from the pineal gland. And you can even see that, right, on my plasma ball. Or if you got a plasma ball, I'm, I need to get a bigger one. But just like a plasma ball, just like a plasma ball. All right. So check this out, right? I'm going to show Hebrews something else about their religion that they don't know. And I'm going to move on now 
from the headless horsemen and all that. We're going to make a lot of connections today. Don't worry, I got you, man. So the genie leaving the lamp is exactly how the kundalini energy rises up out the terrarium, the Yahweh terrarium. And guess what? This is what I want to share with you real quick, right? And now I'm about to go real damn deep. Now, this is what's at the North Pole. What's at the North Pole is a huge cosmic boulevard or a opening in time and space. And now we about to go deep. I want everybody to go ahead and hit the like button, right? Now, what Sanchez, Sanchez what exactly is at the North Pole? This is going to creep your ass out right here. It shouldn't creep you out, though. It should give you comfort. Now, watch this. Here's what's at the North Pole. Let me get my next slide because I want to be very clear. Be very clear. Hold on. Check this out. Here is what's at the North Pole, y'all. You see this little, yeah, excuse me. You see this hole in the middle of our brain? See, check this out, y'all. In the middle of every human's brain, there's this opening. And this opening ain't even connected to the physical dimension. It exists on a higher plane. And, and, and guess what? Our consciousness or our kundalini energy, our spiritual essence as it flows through the body, what's given the body animation, when that is pulled from the body, it is pulled from the body via a tethering line or a Jedi blade, which is this white little dot. In other words, this white little dot in your head, this is what it is right here. Watch this. That white little dot and your brain is no different than this pyramid beaming up the light. Your brain is literally like this pyramid. That's what I'm telling you. Let me go back to my collage. You see this? You see the pyramid from the top down view? There's an opening in the middle of your brain, and this is what allows you to travel to heavens, which is how we get the concept of Aladdin on the lamp, which is why you see this God with his blade saying he tore his way up out the terrarium and they, in the Mayan they got a deity right here breaking up out that hole right there you see a face in the middle of that hole you know why when we die and our energy go to the North Pole you see that hole at the middle of the North Pole that's your soul literally leaving its body because your body and the earth is one and the same so when you get to that hole at the middle of the north pole your consciousness is literally pulling itself throughout the whole neural network from the feet to the to the hands all the energy flowing through your body all that is going to be ripped r.i.p it's going to be pulled the north pole the north pole all of this life force energy will be pulled out of the body, out of this hole right here in the top of the brain. So guess what we look like? We look like unicorns. Yeah, this is the concept of the unicorn. Because the, the creature with the horn on top of its head is the one with the birthday hat on symbolizing rebirth. That's why Santa Claus wear a triangle hat. Because why? It's representing what I'm telling you here. The energy beaming up out of the head. Light projects in this way. So you look like a unicorn when the light comes, when the Jedi blade grows up out of this hole right here. Right? This is what it looked like. And so my thing is, Your body and the earth is one and the same. Just like if I put you on a gaming suit and the gaming suit got the goggles attached to it. So when you put this, this suit on, them goggles go over your eyes. And now you inside the game too when you inside the suit. And to take the suit off is to take the game off. So if, if I say I got rules to my game, you can only take your suit off by journeying back to the center of the simulation. And that's to say, can't nobody strip naked on the damn gaming flow. 
Now, in the middle of the gaming room, we got a little booth where people can go and change at. What that mean? Transformation. Everybody, and when you go in the booth, can't nobody go in there with you. It can only fit one person at a time, like a Superman booth or Neo in the Matrix. And this is what happened. Each one of us is a bullet. And when it's your turn to take your gaming suit off, you just can't strip naked on the gaming floor. You got to go in the middle of the earth in the booth like Superman and change clothes like Superman. And now you can fly in the sky with your cape on. But you only can transform in that location, and that's the rules of the game. Santa, center, is the name of the game. Now, check this out. That's what's going on as far as, as our energy journey to the North Pole, as a spirit outside the body, it will take a form. It will look just like your body did. But as it get closer and closer to the North Pole, it will begin to warp and spaghettify and become this green streak that they call in the Northern Lights. And I can show you again what spaghettification looks like. So this is them telling you exactly what happens to us as we transform from our avatar back to just the Kundalini which is the core energy stripped in Eden. This is what we were before we had bodies. And guess what we resembled? The image of God. Now, what was that? The serpent on the tree. Because the serpent was God. That's why I went into all of that earlier about the anguiped. This is Santa. This is the Statue of Liberty. Right? So this is the center of the self, the central nervous system, where reality is taking place at from the perspective of the observer we live in our mind not in our body so this is very deep stuff here and a lot of people won't get it till they watch this a few times let me plug my new presentation while y'all here go to brosanchez.com and it will automatically take you to this page or if you have problems just click the link that's pinned to the top of the chat to my moderators, you will uh, uh, ask that y'all drop my cash app throughout the stream, too, in case people want to support via cash app. So as the soul leaves and journey to the North Pole, this is the Kundalini rising up the base of the spine, and it's going to come out of the skull, out of this hole right here. And this is the concept of the genie leaving the lamp. And here is a soul busting up up out they, the top of their brain right here. This is a face that represent me and you coming up out of the simulation, up out of Maru. See, this is a big simulation. And we're, as we journey to the North Pole, we're stripping ourselves of the body. And by the time we get to Eden, we'll be naked again like we started before we put on the clothes, which is the body, the game and suit the avatar. So when your soul leaves this hole, it literally be, it will finally, guess what's going to happen when your soul get to the North Pole and leave that hole? You're going to look down at the ground as you hover in the sky over your body. Listen to what I'm saying. I can't put a dead body on the screen, so I'm going to put a sleeping body. You'll get my point. Now imagine this, right? Imagine you die. You get outside of your body. At least you think you out of your body, but it's levels to this shit. You start journeying back to the North Pole because you see these souls that look like you. They're like ghost versions of themselves. All of these things are going in the sky. Let me show you some. They show you this. In a lot of Christian artwork, like this. This is what we see. We see a lot of souls journeying back to the North Pole. Now, as we go into the middle of the earth, we are actually rising up in elevation. We ain't just going to the middle. We going to the center and up at the same time. This is the stairway to heaven. Now, what's going on is that our consciousness is deeply embedded all the way down the skull into the forehead, which is why I want to show you the brain. 
In other words, right? Your spirit went through the little hole in your brain. And everybody got a spiral right here. That spiral represent the work of the spirit, which is the spiral. It, it, everything following the path of magnetism. See, what happens is when the genie entered the lamp, when the spirit entered the body, it entered through a little hole in the head. That hole is still a star in the sky. It, it's still a, the crown chakra, whatever. The spirit is deeply immersed in the body. That's how you can wiggle your toes, move your hands. All of that is life force that has saturated the body. It filled it up like me blowing up a, a sex doll. God blew the breath in the atom. Right? Blew him up. Because listen, when your energy leave the body, the body going to flatten out like a doll losing air. It's going to get flat, decompose, shrivel away. It's literally your soul is God, your body is Adam. And when the soul enters the body, it inflates it with life force. And when it leaves the body, it's like air leaving a balloon. The body starts to shrink and wither away. Now, check this out, right? So the way that the soul enters and leaves the body is through the chimney. This is what they say about Santa. Santa enters and, 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 and exits the body through a little hole in the top of the house. Now, guess what? Your body is the house for your soul. This is why the Bible said that the body is a temple. How did the soul get inside of this temple and how is the soul going to leave this temple? Well, you know what? I can answer that with a collage if y'all got a little time. Let me pull it at. Because it gets real deep now. Watch this. It gets real deep. Let me let me pull something up. Um, here we go. There you go. Did you know that the word mosque means to fly? Yeah. Look up the etymology of it. The word mosque means to fly. You know what that antenna on top of the mosque is? to beam the soul out the body. Do you know why the mosque shaped the way it's shaped with the hole in the middle of it? Because people, they got the churches made the same way. It's only one religion in the world and they got everybody divided, but the only religion is out of body experience, nigga. And that's going to heaven and coming back to the earth to be multidimensional. That's your inheritance. That's the only religion, bro, is leaving the earth and coming back, being able to be a, 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 a archon. And they do, it, they do it through technology. We can do it naturally. Now, look, the concept of the mosque, and go look up your etymology, it means to fly. Don't trip because, look, the mosque is made the same way the church is made. The same way the cathedral is made. Let me see if I can find this next collage for you. Check it out because look at the CERN machine. Look at the CERN machine. That's, see, this is the soul leaving the body. Why? Because think about what I'm telling you, fam. If the CERN machine is a gateway portal for us to walk in and out of different simulations, when you get to any other simulation, there has to be a body for you there. You just can't exist within one of these simulations as soul energy, as a, a Nagini. The genie got to be in a lamp to play the game. You got to put on an avatar suit. So... When we go on in and out of these universes, there's already a version of us on the other side while the other one of us stay asleep. So because of that, the machine that we use to enter and exit the different bodies, it resembles the, the opening in the top of the brain. Why? Because literally that opening in the top of your brain is how you got plugged into the simulation, which is why when you die, guess what they say? Rip. Somebody put your damn gamer's plug from the other side and you're going to wake up and take the suit off and say, damn, that was a crazy game. And you're going to remember that what you signed up for.
Because before we put this shit on, they told us, listen, when you go in this game, it's going to be indistinguishable from reality. And you won't even know you in a game because it'll start from a birth as a child. Your memory basically going to be deleted. So if they want to maintain the integrity of the game, how do they take people up out of a Truman show? They make them die in random ways. And that will actually sell the realness of the game. When you tell a person, everybody got to die and we don't know when or how or why. Only God knows. I'm just giving you something to think about. But I'm showing you that the mosque was the original UFO ship. The mosque was the original UFO ship. Or the Vamana, as they call it. You see how this resembles a UFO ship, right? A little flying. And that's because people went inside of these things to beam out of the body. This is ancient technology. The UFO ships is literally when we went into these temples, we didn't go in there to pray to a God that we said already know everything. We literally went in these temples to leave the earth. All of these temples and mosques are old technology. Why do you think the Masonic lodges and all them other things are temples that's based on this same geometry of a dome? Why? Because it's the genie's lamp. Everybody know that the genie lamp is brass. And it looked the same color brass, copper as this thing because it is conductive metals. Copper, brass, these are things that they're using with Neuralink technology to this day. Elon Musk is creating technology that's able to transmit consciousness out the body and interact with human consciousness. Why? Because of copper wires, brass uh, metals, and copper. This is stuff that the ancestors was using, and they had got so advanced with these metals and how these metals interact with our consciousness and use for healing purposes that they built entire temples of brass. When they said you in the belly of the beast, when you walked into that temple, you was going into Saturn. This why it's a ring around it. And the hole in the middle, that's the all-seeing eye. What we originally did we all went into these temples as groups. This was a spaceship and you left the earth with your group. It was service, Sunday service, Monday service. This was no different than a damn bus station for advanced souls. People would go in there and say, yeah, man, you headed out today? Yeah, man, yeah, I'm going to such and such. Why you headed to Andromeda? Yeah, I'm going to Andromeda. I'm going to this galaxy. These were vehicles that we use as lunch ports, lunch pads, star port, all of the star forts, star ports, pyramids. This was stuff we went in and literally we would leave our body. Now, we talk about the elite being able to do that today, go into different bodies and body swap, and we get scared of it. They want you to be scared of an ability that you once had. And they took it away from you, and now they able to do it. And they got you trapped in their little world, harvesting you for energy. When they say that they want to use green energy, guess what that's a cold word for? They want to use kundalini energy to power the new world. Don't get it twisted now. Guess what kind of energy they want to use? Green energy. Clean energy. Innocent energy. That's solar power. Don't let them fool you because they are using fucking cold words. Solar power ain't got nothing to do with the sun. The word sun used to be spelled S-O-L, which is the soul in the body. And the S-U-N was S-E-N and S-I-N dealing with the center of the self, not the yellow ball that's giving you daytime. That's a lie. That's why I showed you this God is in the middle of the sun and moon. He can't be the sun and moon if he in the middle of them. That opening above his head represent Polaris. It don't represent the sun or the moon. It's solar power. It's the pulling energy directly from the center of the self. 
these people are vampires and you think that it's a damn game. Now, people been saying that the people in power are vampires for years. And then when I go to giving you the science of how they harvest an energy, it, people will go to saying that it's pseudoscience. Because they don't really believe what the hell they say. They just be talking. Now, now check this out, right? Let me take some of this stuff off. So, solar power is how they going to power the world in the future. Why? Because everything going to be connected to the IoT, which is the Internet of Things. And once your body get connected to the power grid, people, it ain't nothing but a matter of time for money go away and the new currency is direct energy from the self. You already connected to the grid. Everything going to be connected. It's going to be chips inside of, let me stop, you know, I'm talking about Dorito chips. It's going to be Fritos inside of everybody that's connecting them to the grid. <laughs> you know, it's going to be Ruffles inside of everybody. You dig? Now, uh, so my thing is this right here. Yeah, just a little old Pringles in everybody for the, for the algorithm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, whatever your brand is. You know, uh, sweet heat, mine, you know, sweet heat. <laughs> so, so, so we, 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 we move on along, see? So, uh, yeah, chips in everybody, man. Doritos up in everybody, you know, that's the internet of things, you know? So, uh, when everybody connected, like it's a matter of time for you being harvested, like the movie The Matrix say. Okay, so. That's what the transhumanism thing is all about, to get you connected with their new energy grid, the IoT. And they can siphon energy directly from you. And if you think I'm playing about the, the God that siphons energy from the people, yes, they created this technology based upon our central nervous system. They reverse engineer it, and now they able to, the same thing that's able to pull our soul out of our body to get us to a higher level, they reverse engineered that, and now they can pull your soul out the body. And this is a siphon tool. And if you want to go into the word siphon for a minute, just bear with me, and I'll pull up another collage that'll teach you about the symbolism surrounding this siphoning God. One minute. Because if you don't know what most women, most children, they don't know what a siphon is. So I got to slow down, take the time. That's why I make these collages. So I just got to be patient if y'all will be patient. Let me pull it up real quick. Sorry for the delay. Sorry for the delay. Here we go. Here is where the siphon is. But I want you to take a look at that hook that the God that they worship and holds a hook in his hand. And they call him the Ripper. And he holds a blade, the Ripper, right? But that ain't got nothing to do with a physical blade. That's a siphon tool. And if you don't know what a siphon is, bear with me while you look at this collage. I'll be getting the next one. This one uh, actually buy me a little time. So hold on. And soon as I give up, that's when I'll find it. Let me see. Damn it, man. Let me go and do an extra large view. Yeah, that's better. Hold on, man. Got so much shit I need to rename it so I can just search for stuff. All right, I found it. Damn, that took a little minute. Thanks for your patience. So that's what a siphon is. A siphon is a, like a hook little tube. It pulls liquid from one reality into another one. Now, I want you to understand, right, how water is sucked through a siphoning tool because I'm about to show you something that's going to blow you away. Now, check this out. 
This is called spaghettification. Look at what happens to the kundalini. <laughs> oh, we just get a random laugh out of nowhere. Um, I bumped on the thing with the paper, my bad. Okay, so yeah. And this shows you how your energy makes a hooking, make a hooking like pattern, this hook like pattern, right? The Nike check, the Nike pattern. So this hooking, the one that is ripping you from your body is literally pulling the soul out the simulation. But look, as the soul, as, the, as your avatar gets closer and closer to the point of the, the singularity, the black hole, right, that's going to um, get us. Well, don't be scared of that. Remember, here is what the black hole is at the middle of the earth so you don't be scared. Because I hate when people, it's your own damn brain, man. Now listen, your soul is inside of your body. And when you breathe your last breath, your soul will have to exit your body to exit the earth. That's what I'm telling you. And your soul will exit through this hole right here. But instead of the universe making you look at your own organs and intestines and guts and stuff, the universe put a layering program over that. It's called earth. So when you get out your body, you will look like yourself. You will look like a little bitty, like clear ghostly form of yourself. And you will see other form people that died and there will be, it'll be a light welcoming them at the North Pole, sort of calling them home. And that's why I showed you the people headed back, all the people headed back uh, home. When everybody get to the hole at the North Pole, it's going to be their own brain and their own body in another world where we put on the gaming suit. And they're going to take the goggles off and be like, damn, that was a crazy game. And we probably been playing for like 30 minutes in the base reality. But to us, it was a whole childhood. We created advanced simulations in Eden. And we started to put babies in them. And we started to call the baby simulations baby lands or Babylons. And that's what the whole central nervous system is. It's a game. It's an old game. And you say, Brother Sanchez, why would they put babies in a simulation instead of let them be born directly in Eden? It's for activation. When we say activate your kundalini, that's what we all doing now with our incarnations. It's because in order for us to understand immortality, we must understand mortality. There's a polarity to the universe. If you don't understand cold, you don't understand hot. Learning one is learning the other. But if you was born into a rich family, you wouldn't understand what it's like to be poor. And that's what poor people keep telling rich people all the time. Why don't you walk a day in my shoes? Guess what? Rich people would be a lot more compassionate to the poor if they did. If we can switch places. And the universe did that. The universe created a purging system. A simulation called purgatory, which is the earth realm, the underworld, for people to work out all their flaws before they enter heaven. You got to purge yourself of all your worst uh, versions. This is a siphoning process. And so they have reverse engineered the technology that would allow us to eject ourselves from the body, if you will. And they have created huge siphoning machines. And that's what the whole CERN technology Neuralink, the IOT, all of this is about. So, the whole thing is that if your soul is going to leave your body and be projected into another body, when you get outside your body, what do you look like? You look like a little serpent. And that little serpent is able to go into this little bitty hole right here. Now, guess what it looks like when that happened? It looks like a sperm going into an egg. The Matrix told you some. They say your birth was fake. This simulation is telling us so many lies because it's got the, the layering program. It's the liaring program, lying. When your soul is traveling to the North Pole, 
this thing don't want you to see energy leaving the body. Right? All of the, if you look at your veins right now, those are lightning strikes. We are electrical beings. When you die, you're clear, we can bring you back to life. Electricity, give you a jump off, man. You're an electric car, wireless, powered wirelessly with your higher self powering the lower self. And when the higher self done with its experience, it will leave the body. And it is the energy that's powering the body to have this experience. They're one and the same. The release of energy through the body is the experience that the soul is having. It's releasing the energy into the body just like you put a quarter into the arcade machine to play the game. The cost of life is death. What is death? The release of energy. You got to give some to get some. That's the law of the universe. So how does it look when the soul enters this hole? It looked like a sperm entering an egg, a genie entering a lamp. All of these things play out on all layers of reality. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, let me see, make sure I got everything with this section. We're going to be going over this more tomorrow on my main channel this is information from my full presentation on Yahweh the conceiver this presentation is the basics I'm kind of going sort of more deeper and advanced with these uh, videos like this one but this one sort of lays the foundation for all of the work that I'm building on now and that's why I thought it was a good uh, you know, idea to put that out that way. If you want to follow us along thoroughly, the people that got this presentation, they will definitely get a more insight with what I'm going over now. If they got this presentation, even if you go back and watch it after this, you'll, you'll tie more things together that are already tied together with that one. This is in addition to that. So if you dig in this, check it out. You, you, you're going to dig that. So, um, um let's let's go let me oh yeah let me make sure i got the let me see here yeah so man this is very dope because the green streaks of energy that we see at the north pole are genies leaving the lamp and the temple the mosque resemble the earth because what we did right all of these temples and mosques and all of that around the world they were built to teach you on how the soul ascends through the layers of the self to escape all of the cycles of death and rebirth. So here is a, a temple in India. And uh, when people start on the earth level, the ground level, and they got to go up the different levels to make it to the Holy of Holies, to the North Pole. And see, that's what I'm saying. You got people going around and around, up and down. This is the original Christmas tree, right? And what the people don't know is that they are the ornaments on the tree, the lights on the tree. This is representing the tree of life at the North Pole, where it's all of us is really at the North Pole sleep. And we're ascending up that tree because that's the way out. It's a big elevator. So we rest on each level. And that's called seven life and deaths it is each steps. And once we make it all the way to the top, this is based on the flat earth cosmology, of course. We don't have to go deep, too deep in it. It's all based on flat earth cosmology. So, again, this is the whole genie in the lamp concept, though. Your UFO ship, like I said, we will go inside of these things to leave the earth. Them were the good old days. When you went in with your group like Sunday service, and ever, it wasn't no pastors. It was a, a flight guide. That was the most experienced astral traveler. We didn't have a space program. We had a spiritual program. This was before NASA. Before NASA, let me break some down to you. Before NASA, y'all, we all worship the serpent. What you think the symbol of NASA is? It's the serpent, which is the kundalini. That's literally how you lead the earth. That's literally how you explore the heavens. They took our symbol, and now they got you believing in rockets and stuff. But guess what, though? Let me show you what the original rocket was. You can't make this up. 
they turned it into the Jesus fish. Here go the original rocket. You see how the sacred geometry tie into my work and why I use symbolism? Because without these pictures, you can't see the damage that's been done. You can't see the fuckery and the lies and how deep this rabbit hole go with how they lying. Don't you know that breast cancer and all that, the ribbon month and all that, is because we would have special um, rituals to worship the womb and we would wear all pink for the womb. And they turned that into breast cancer. Because they want to desecrate everything we do and turn it into some modern stuff to serve their agendas and to promote their stuff. But the original concept of that Jesus fish was that portal in between your mama legs. And guess what, y'all? We reverse engineered the womb into a CERN machine. Oh, you saying Sanchez line? Watch this right. Check it out. Look at that collage. CERN is the female womb reverse engineered as a machine and it is a portal to the heavens. We got to quit playing with motherfuckers that's saying pseudo, pseudo, that ain't signed. Them the people that's agents. We can't mess with them and I will be exposing Billy Carson on Golden Wings Media Saturday at 2 o'clock. I got receipts that the man worked with NASA and the European Space Agency. But we ain't going to talk about him right now. Back to what I'm saying. See, people, if you look at the CERN machine, you will see what the hell the mosque is. Sanchez, what are you talking about? You ever looked at this mosque, man? Look at that mosque. That mosque is ancient CERN technology. People, CERN ain't nothing new. They, they making an over-glorified uh, mosque right there. The word mosque mean to fly. This is the UFO beam me up portal. This is why Mario traveled to different worlds in a pipe. How many of y'all like Mario? Put a one in the chat room if you like Mario. If you like to warp your ass and travel to different worlds through the little pipe. Drop a one if you like Mario. It's one of the best-selling games of all time. And I'm finna go somewhere with that. Any of y'all like Mario? We all love it. Don't, 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 don't lie, bro. But let me show you why I, I brought up Mario. Because, guys, we got to realize that these people made a lot of money with Mario. Billions hundreds of billions, and it's based on ancient spirituality. Now, they're hiding this from you. But guess what, though? They give it to you in the video game, and you be like, damn, Mario can just warp to different places in a pipe. You know why? That's called a wormhole, dude. We've been making them. They all over the earth, and they won't tell you about them. Everything got some truth to it, brother. This is the pipe that Mario used to warp zone. We have been making Stargate technology, B. And if you think I'm lying, look at Buddha right there. That's what they give you with Mario coming up out the pipe, in and out the pipes. Now, what do they teach you about Santa Claus? Uh-oh, Sanchez, how you make all them connections? My third eye open. My third eye open. Sanchez, how you, you do it every time, Sanchez? I know. I know. You ever heard of a guy called Jack coming out the box? You ever saw Jack popping out his box? L let me tie all this together. Because Jack coming out his box, we know that's the damn genie coming out the lamp. But what is he doing? He's busing out of his box. And what did I teach you earlier? What a bus was. What is a bus? It's the alma mater. Sanchez, what the hell is the alma mater? You know we don't know what that is. I got you, fam. The alma mater is just an old name of the earth goddess. She predate the concept of jack-in-the-box. You see how much learning you get with me? 
from the moment you log in to the moment you leave, I'm going to just come and not waste your time. And I'm going to just bogart you with knowledge and facts and revelations. I don't play with people. And when I do some, I'm going to do it right. Now, let's go ahead here. She's in between the sun and moon busting up out the body. That's your original concept of Jack coming out the box, y'all. And that's why they call it a statue like that, a bus. You will see a statue mounted up on a little column. And it only had a torso with dealing with the Taurus field. Talking about you busting up out the, 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 the box, jack out the box. You see what I'm saying? So they turned her into jack in the box. Um, we see you got Santa Claus. It's the same concept. Just syncretism for everybody. And Mario, we're going to tie with that too. Let's move on and let's go ahead and, and, and show you Buddha with that. Ancient concepts that's been turned into modern video games and folklores and fairy tales that they capitalize off of, off of, you know. So, again, if you look at uh, this CERN machine, right, I can prove to you, my friends, that what you are walking into and calling a church or a temple is an outdated form of this technology. Yeah, I can't make it up. Check this out, right? Check this out. I show and prove, right? Yeah, that's inside of an old Vatican temple. I want to share some with y'all. All of these big-ass castles and big old churches and cathedrals around the world, we did not build those. All the Greeks did during the Renaissance was paint over what was already there because if they if Michelangelo wouldn't have repainted this shit, if they wouldn't have went repainting over all this stuff, the original carvings was Tartarians, ancient civilizations that they trying to write out of history. Oh, the, what they trying to make ancient aliens and Anunnaki was ancient civilizations that they deleted off the map when they took over the map conquest and took over the maps. It's ancient civilizations that was on this earth that had the knowledge of Nikola Tesla, the knowledge of Elon Musk. This ain't them, but the past revisiting us today. The people that's telling you we built all these temples and mosques, let me show you what they built. Let me show you what they built. This what they built, y'all. Hold up a minute. Sure. I'm going to give them their credit. Yeah. I'm going to give you yours, man. Quit claiming that our ancestors shit. This is what they built, y'all. <laughs> now, now, think about what I'm saying, because the people in power, you, you know, okay, now, now just watch this, right? Now, this was in the 1600s. This was in the, in the 1600s. This is what these people was building, y'all. Shack towns and dirt roads. Now, now keep in mind, I'm going to Here go the kicker. Watch, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. How about this kicker? How about the San Francisco City Hall is one of the oldest buildings in California. This building goes back before the 1600s. They keep on keeping it up, renovating. What did this prove is that the people that built the Wild Wild West, can you imagine being in the old Wild Wild West, you walking around these shabby towns, and in the background is this motherfucker right here? It's out of place. It don't even match the time because something happened on the earth. They ain't telling you about a mini reset. Oh, my God. We had a mini reset. I'm telling you, bro. And they call it the Carrington e event. They call it the Carrington event. Go look it up. Now, check it out, folks. These folks want us to believe that they built this, that they built that big arch in London. Let me show you that arch in London. And this is a this is a a, a a a ring magnet. Did you know that this is a big old magnet that's able to recharge and and serve as a, a a free energy device? Don't even get me into that, and don't even get me on the fact that they designed this shit based on the Earth and what they call the Goddess Portal. Sanchez, 
are you just making stuff up? If you give me a minute, I'll prove what I'm saying because you know I, I prove my shit. Now watch this, right? Give me a minute. I'm finna get the collage now. I don't make stuff up. Watch this. Give me one minute. Matter of fact, let's pull up uh because I haven't put this one up in a minute. Let me see. The goddess portal. Where is it? Here it is right here. Here it is right here. That is the goddess portal. Now in the Hebrew cosmology, they call it the vault of heaven again. If I pull up the Hebrew cosmos, right, that's just the female uterus or the devil trident for people who want to know what the goddess portal is. But check this out real quick, right? Let's see if we can pull this thing up to the Hebrew talk about the chambers of heaven. Look at the chambers of heaven. What is the chambers of heaven? They are gateways up out of here. The, this, but I'm telling you, this is an opening or like the sky vault, different chamber, like how Mario got pipes that lead to different worlds. This where you go and decide your next, when, you, when your spirit get to the pineal where Jacob met God at and wrestled with God, which I'm going to break that down tomorrow. That is when your soul get to the top of the skull in that little hole that I showed you. That is when you're going to get out your body because that is when your streak of light at the North Pole will go out the other side of the black hole. You will poke your head up out of here. And when you poke your head up out of here, you will look like a genie hanging outside of a lamp. Okay? And while you in that mode, you will be granted some wishes, three wishes. That go to three wishes right there. What does that mean? That mean three um, options for your next incarnation and it's going to be better than this one and you get the choice. What you want to be, what you want to do next, your wish will be granted. This is the whole concept of genies and wishes being granted and all that. It's about the genie leaving the lamp is you going back into another lamp with another batter mission and your mission getting better and better because the universe saying you gave me some I'm going to give you something that turned into the doctrine of those who suffer with Christ and suffer in Christ will be rewarded, meaning they saving the best for last. You got to live out your worst lives before you live out your best lives. And that turns into this whole. Climbing the stairway to heaven concept. OK. So. The earth is your brain. Reality is taking place in between the ears. It's a projection of the mind. It ain't around you, it's in you. So when you get ready to leave the earth, you will leave the body by going inside to get out. And going within is literally the extraction of the energy up out of that hole in the top of the brain, which is how Santa leaves through the chimney. Santa going to leave this earth through the chimney. And that chimney is the hole that's in the top of your brain, which is a machine in another reality that they layering. This is a game and the game can't let you see what's going on in the real base reality. So instead of the game letting you see yourself leave your body and pass through your intestines and walk through your heart and all the inside of your body, what, your, what the simulation did, it created this overlaying program called Earth. And your, it turn, that's why you see Gab is a body representing the Earth that sleep. He laid down because Earth is the sleeping soul, which is Gab laid down. He under the cover, which is Nut, his blanket. He covered in darkness. That's the simulation. The Truman show over him. And him being born again out of this arch or nut is him taking the covers off. The night sky is a veil. And we break through it like a football team homecoming. That's what Jesus showing us right here. The MGM lion, the lion of Judah breaking through the little hoop. So. 
your brain is the CERN machine. But the game can't let you know that. So it cloaks this thing with technology. Put it this way. If I created a simulation and I created another version of you in the simulation and I had the technology to extract your consciousness from the body via the hole in your brain, because what is Neuralink doing is drilling a hole in your brain. Watch what I'm showing you, right? Because I don't want you to think I'm making this up. We already did Neuralink. And we already accepted the mark of the beast. That's what I'm telling you. They did this in the ancient world, and now he just doing it again. Watch this. When we created the first Neuralink chip technology, and we loaded into our simulation, they was putting babies in it. You one of them. Now watch this, right? Here's what happened. When they put the black chip in your little... Because he's going to drill a hole in your shit. And then they're going to put the, uh, let me put hole in brain surgery. I guess they don't want to show me the surgery because it's too graphic. I want to see the surgery. We can handle it. But what they do, they literally drill a penny-sized hole in the brain. I want to see it. I'm nasty like that. <laughs> now listen, I just stumbled across this. I believe this technology is so old that all of those experiments they was doing back in the day, they call it trepanation. Trep is trip to go on a trip. I believe they have been found out that human consciousness can be extracted and they've been doing it because you can find ancient uh, skulls with like with Neuralink shit, like somebody put Neuralink on them and stuff. But let me go to Neuralink, though. So today, right, they doing the same thing. So they'll drill a little hole in the brain and you become a unicorn. This is a unicorn technology. Now, check this out, right? When they drill this hole in, in, in the brain. That's the siphoning tool. Let me show you something. If I was to take your consciousness out of your body via this hole and upload it into another body that's inside of a simulation in a computer, perhaps, or such, huh? You, right? The possibilities can be endless. But we know that consciousness is transmittable, transportable. So if I extract your consciousness out of this body and I put it into another body, guess what? That other body will have a receiver in for this Neuralink technology. It's like a satellite bouncing a signal. So your, your, the avatar that they're creating for you in the computer, it will have a hole in the brain just like this one, and it'll have a little antenna on it. And when they fucking upload your consciousness out of this body, it will ping to your other body, it will automatically get sucked into your other body and you will be walking around a simulation like, oh, wow, okay, boom, you in a, you in a new world now. We've been doing this. The world you in right now is a simulation. And we ain't made it to the base reality yet. So let me share something with you. The hole inside of your brain is literally a old ass Neuralink chip, or let me not say old, put it this way. Your real you was born in Eden. And what happened in Eden is they gave you a Neuralink chip in Eden. And in Eden, they loaded those, they chipped those babies. And they made those babies go live out lifetimes and simulations with the chip on their brain. So you're literally a sleeping baby in Eden. And the hole in the middle of your head is a chip that they got in the baby's head in Eden. And when you die in this body, the, the pineal gland, just like Neuralink, will ping your soul to your other body that's at the North Pole. You are a baby that ain't even been born yet.
And you're going to be born with all of this knowledge right here of your whole life experience in that dope that you can start over again with all of this fucking knowledge. And you will only grow and get better and bad. You will be a baby with the knowledge of men in your next life. That's what they're doing. They're creating advanced humans. And the only way they can make advanced humans is through the simulation process. It's a game to activate your fucking layers. Every time you, you, you shed a body, you get more experience. You understand what this shit is all about. Okay, damn, I remember my lifetimes. Okay, I'm, I'm getting better and better. Boom, it's just a layering game. Now, check this out. All of this shit look like our brain because your brain ain't really real. Your body ain't real. None of this shit is a layering uh, program. Instead of them telling you, hey, man, we literally put you in a video game in the base reality because we created an advanced society. I'm telling you, our ancestors create, created an advanced society, and they call it Eden. It's at the middle of the earth. And all of the babies that are born in Eden, they already been through a couple of lifetimes on earth. They are advanced humans. They are superhumans because they are babies born with the knowledge of the lifetimes of many men. This is what they're doing in, in Eden. And you're one of those babies. And so your inheritance to rise up in Eden as a superhuman. But what the archons on earth is doing is saying we can make you a superhuman with this technology they got now. When we already did that. We already in that. You're only going to go into another game, into another game, into another game. When you are already mastering a game, trying to make it out, and you finna get out and get your stripes. You about to get your damn victory crown. But they trying to say your victory crown is technology. You putting on transhumanism and humans going, you see, when we already did that, been there, done that, and, and making it out. So, uh, Yahweh is the pineal gland. Yahweh is the technological God that they call the Demiurge, a.k.a. Yaldeboeth, representing the, the God of the simulation or what they call the lesser God. If you read about Yahweh in my documentary, you will realize in antiquity, Yahweh was not the supreme being. Yahweh was a demigod or lesser God that represented the Lord over the simulation. He don't even speak like the real God. He speaks as one who can only manifest his power by using humans as puppets. And, and that is the God that that is an ancient spirit from from Babylon, Egypt, a hive mind of, of humans that got trapped in this old simulation. And that's what we call in the devil. That's the thing that's trying to keep us here. It's an advanced old technological group from Egypt and shit. They was the first Elon Musk and all of them. See, what happened was everybody started reinventing the wheel when they told you that man's first discovery was the wheel. Why didn't they say it was the tires? How did man discover a wheel before he discovered tools that would allow him to... What are you going to do with just one wheel? Watch this. I'm going to show you something. People, we were smart before we got dumb. When they said man discovered the wheel, they give you one wheel. Look at it. They give you one wheel and that's it. When You know what they hiding from you? We created stargates before we created cars and horse carriages. I told you, it was them that made dirt roads in the wild, wild west. We was too fucking smart for that. Man, we was using stargates. They was riding on horseback in dirt roads. <laughs> See, when they say man invented the wheel, 
It's called Ezekiel's will or the will of God. Here go Ezekiel's will. Look at it. You see that? That's Ezekiel's will. That is the uh, 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 tetrahedron or starship that they reverse engineered. And this is what we see Jesus in. That's Vimana technology. Solar energy, dealing with the soul, not the sun. They want to throw you off, man. See, this wheel is what we invented before we invented tires. Tires come in a set of two or four. But man didn't invent tires first. Man invented the wheel, plural, that's it. The wheel. Because we were more advanced when we started creating tires and horseback riding, we was getting dumbed down. Our ancestors was moving around the earth using stargates. They was teleporting around this bitch, nigga. Walking through a wheel in, in, in New York and popping out in California while you riding a horse taking you months going through the desert on a horseback. We was using stargate portals like Ezekiel. Look at this. This is ancient technology, portaling tech. We finna go back to it, though, in the near future. People will be getting around in wormholes, stargates. Science just now reverse engineered what we already did on the Earth. We have been there, done that. They late, man. So this is the light bearer, and this is why the Statue of Liberty got all them spikes on the head. Jesus wore a crown of thorns, because these were men that was using ancient technology that was able to rip holes through the fabric of time and space. That's what CERN is. Can't make this up, man. If you think I'm lying about them knowing about CERN technology, right, and them reverse engineering it into... Look, let me just show you something real quick, real quick. I got you. Hold on. I'm finna go even deeper now. Check me out, right? So, boom, boom. Here go Jesus versus ancient Egypt is all talking about resurrection with technology. Here go another God, Syria, Seeker. All right, let me move on. Remember what I said about the wild, wild west. These people didn't build these temples and mosques. They inherited them. And guess what? They don't let us know what to use them for. They know what to use them for. They go up in them same temples, and they get to go to heaven. You go in them temples because you're going through hell every day. And we don't know that when we go on in these churches and temples that these were starships that let us leave our body. You go in there praying to graven images. That poster already know what you need. They the all knowing, right? That ain't that wasn't the purpose of these buildings. It was to go in there and meditate like Buddha. This was the warp zone Mario pipe that we went in to beam into other universes. And you didn't go in there and see a peep, bunch of people with their eyes shut praying. You went up in there and saw a bunch of people sleep. And they would be in another world like in the Matrix. You know, when they go into the Matrix, how they lay out on their little tables, their little bed. And we took turns going in groups. This was the space program before it became NASA. Now, NASA got the symbol of the serpent. That's the Kundalini leaving up out of this hole right here. They the fake space program. We ain't going to get nowhere with them. We will never get out our bodies. The genie will never make it out the lamp fucking with them. Because they make you think that you can lead the earth physically. But you got to project out your body because your body is the earth. And all of the ancestors knew that. And the technology that we built to get you out your body was all these churches and mosques that we defiling the day with false gods. Because we are the gods that was using this thing to, to go back to heaven for God to lead the earth and come back to the earth. Because we knew we won our bodies. We were the original archons. 
that was able to get out our body and go into our little spaceship and lead the earth and go into another avatar and come back and make prophecies and go into all that. We was multidimensional gods when we knew how to use these temples. Now we go into them and we pray to gods and that's what's keeping us stuck on the earth. But man invented the wheel. That is the CERN machine. CERN is very old, y'all. It's portaling technology. We created Stargates before we created cars, man. Think of how advanced we were. We was creating stuff that let you know we were very spiritual creatures. Because for you to be, you got to be thinking on a spiritual level when you say, okay, I know the earth is holographic. I know I'm a spirit and not my body. And you reverse engineer the spiritual technology and you start making wormholes. It makes a very advanced spiritual earth, advanced spiritual society versus we don't know nothing about spirituality. So now you only think about how do I move my body when it's the mind that moves the body. And everything take place in the spiritual realm before they take place in the physical. And space and time governs the physical realm. And space and time can be bent and manipulated. You can put a hole in space-time fabric like me poking a hole through this paper with the right technology. And that's what we had. We was poking little holes through reality. And somebody will say, hey, man, you need to poke a hole from New York and we'll uh, poke a hole in California and we will connect those holes together. And what happens is we create Mario technology. A person can walk into a wormhole from New York that's connected to a wormhole in Cali and we don't need airplanes or nothing. And if you think I'm making this up, there were big old wheels all around the earth that they tow down. Just wheels, stone wheels, and they say, well, that's just a monument. It was nothing. That's ancient technology that's beyond our comprehension. Those would have been activated, and they would have created a wormhole with the energy once they stir up. You would have created a vortex in the middle of that hoop, and it was an ancient form of CERN. And you would have opened up, a, and they would have been able to, to sync two ends together like a phone call. Like me calling you from Vegas and you live in London. And the two ends connected. That's how they were sending the signal from one wormhole to the other one. They knew that the fabric of reality was holographic. So a person could pop, technically, with all of the laws in our universe, supports wormholes. This ain't no theory. This is something we should be able to make. And it's just taking them time to reverse engineer ancestral concepts. So that's how our ancestors was. Think about it. They look at the ancient world and everybody had the same symbols at one point. Everybody was connected. There was one language on earth. Even your Bible talk about it that everybody on earth spoke one language. Everybody had one God. The false God came and separated us. That's Yaldabaoth, the Demiurge, the lesser God. He divided and conquered. That is the AI hive mind from Babylon and Egypt. They want everybody worshiping the Egyptians, your Billy Carsons, all of them sold out to an ancient artificial intelligence. It was in this simulation before we got here. That's what you call in this uh, Yahweh, this God up there in the, in the, in the, on, 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 right in the exosphere. They got a fake, fake opening right there, recycling souls. He the false light bearer, the Statue of Liberty. It's the false light. See, the thing is, though, you're going to know the difference, though, because he ain't the most high. He just the closest. You will see it's something brighter beyond him. Keep going. Keep motherfucking going. This is what everybody talking about don't go into the light. That's what they call in fake north instead of true north. See, 
because what the, what the Yaldabaoth did, the Demiurge, he created a CERN machine right there at the North Pole to trick motherfuckers to go into the false light. But guess how you know he the false light? Because it's too close. You still going to see it's some traveling I got to do. I ain't made it to the end yet. So whatever this light is, is only bright because it's closer to me. But it's something still twinkling back there calling my name. And you mush him in a motherfucking faith. Poof, poof, be motherfucking gone. And you keep on uh, moving. <laughs> That's fake North. That's some real shit. I'm serious. That's fake. That's Santa. Well, I'm telling you, they reverse engineered the North Pole. And the only way a person can fall for that shit if they don't know the knowledge of life after death, life before death. They only know Jesus and they only know Allah, Buddha, because guess what? The fake pole is what's going to project Allah and Buddha to them. Now, guess what I'm going to say to y'all? This is a theory, and I have many. But there's a possibility with what I know, with what they know, that they've reverse engineered a lot of this technology and they've gotten so good at it that they're harvesting souls. Now the souls that will be vulnerable candidates for the harvest will be religious people and people that just don't know. I mean, they're, they're basically taking advantage of the ignorant, leading them to the slaughterhouse sheeple. And the truth is that Ain't nothing can save them but themselves. They will be recycled inside of this machine until they wake up. And it's getting harder and harder to wake up because the powers that be getting more advanced at censoring the truth, hiding it, and, la and the layering program. So again, man invented the wheel. He didn't invent the tires. <laughs> OK, and that's very important because the wheel is the black hole sun. The CERN machine, we created Stargates before we created Toyotas and before we created BMWs, my friend, we created UFO ships, CERN machines. And then there was a popular statement said, don't reinvent the wheel. Why is that a popular statement? Why didn't it say, don't reinvent those four tires? <laughs> and why wouldn't you want to make more tires so we can drive? It don't make sense, do it? I'm making it make sense. The reason they said, don't reinvent the wheel, is because when our ancestors started to create fake worlds and similar worlds or simulations, right? they started to get stuck in them. And so they created systems of religion and spiritual systems to help people get up out of these worlds. And they started going back home saying, this world is not our home. That was the original Christianity. So the fake Christ is building a kingdom on the earth. Go read Revelation. Yo, the fake God, Yaldabaoth, is going to come back and build a kingdom of heaven on the earth. And all of the Christians going to stay here. They ain't going to go to heaven. Go read Revelation. Everything happening now is happening in, in Revelation. People, they building a, a, a Zion, kingdom of Zion on earth, which is man Zions, man heavens, which is metaverses, simulations, quantum computers. And we create Neuralink technology to go live inside of these false worlds. And that is the big abomination of Babylon, which is why we said, don't reinvent the wheel. We're opening up fake portals. Every time we open up a new simulation with a new CERN machine, our energy got to go through that matrix for it can go to the North Pole. So it's really holding us up, man. And that's what they want to do. Buy time. This is how they buy time. Time ain't free. So check this out, y'all. They create time by making more rings. 
for the energy because if you make it to the top of the stairway, you make it up out this bitch. So guess what they do? They keep adding a new stairway. Excuse me, they keep adding a new floor to this Babel Tower. So just when you think you're getting closer to getting out, you got to take the elevator up through another floor. And you like, when I'm going to get to the ceiling? They like the ceiling is on floor number 100, and you on floor number 101. And I'm like, well, what happened? Oh, they built a new floor while we was riding up. Okay, let me out on floor 101. That's the last floor with the ceiling. And we end up on floor 102. And I'm like, well, why we ain't off at the ceiling yet? They added a new flow. This is what they're doing with creating more simulations to buy time to occupy your energy in the fake worlds. And the more incarnations you have going, this is what they said by the hamster being on the wheel. This is the hamster's wheel, the CERN machine. That's what I'm telling you. And the more you run circles around this thing, right? <laughs> Excuse me for that random laugh. I keep bumping it. I got my notes right next to the stream deck. But, um, yeah. So, yeah. They said, don't reinvent the wheel. I wouldn't be surprised if the ancestors started tearing down all of those stargates. Because if you think about what was happening... People weren't going back to the base reality. We had a matrix of Stargate portals bouncing people around simulations and metaverses. That's what the Yggdrasil tree is all about. Let's pull it up. And don't you know when you say Yggdrasil that the YGG is Egg? Because these, this goes back to Easter and Ishtar. There's a deity that's personifying this tree of life. That is who you call Yahweh, the God, the demigod or the matrix. And we're trying to make it out of his matrix by taking off his body. You can't make it out of his game if how you play his game is putting on the body. If you want to tell Yaldabo if I want out of your matrix, you basically telling him I want out of your body. So he got everybody attached to their bodies and not caring about what happened to their soul. They will sell their soul just to get a BBL. <laughs> that lets you know, man, we care about the body more than the soul. Think about that. People will sell their soul to, to get features on their body. Like, fuck my soul, that ain't worth nothing. Universal Records can have that for six figures. And they'll take that money to adorn their avatars and their bodies with chains and tattoos. And they don't give a fuck that they sold. They sold to decorate their bodies. That's what I'm saying. Everything backwards. So again, the word Yggdrasil is egg. YGG is egg. It's the Nordic way of saying Yggdrasil. It's a tree with eggs. It's resurrection. Easter, Ishtar. Now, I go deep into this in my presentation. And yes, I'm going to use this as a point to promote my presentation. I will not talk about Ishtar anymore. All right. Excuse me. Hold up. Hold on, y'all. Hold up. Sorry about that, guys. Had to take a quick phone call. Hey, I noticed people are supporting the show via Cash App. Let me drop a bomb and say thank you for everyone that sent in a Cash App donation.
Let me say thank you to my moderators for dropping my cash app for people so that they can support the show. Keep that going. Drop the cash app for them. And if you guys want to grab the presentation, do so. Right? Do so. Um, it's, it's very well worth it. Like I was saying about Ishtar, right? I go into Ishtar a lot, and I, and I go into Ishtar in comparison with Yahweh, and I really go in to this whole concept of the keeper of the eggs and why the name Yahweh means ovaries. Hova means come from the word ovaries because the eggs is held in the ovaries is where the egg is at. This was dealing with the female. He personifying the uterus and the uterus is the Taurus field, right? Mama Earth, matrix, the trick of the ma, matrix. What is the trick of the ma? The trick of the ma is you're going to realize you weren't born. None of us were really born. What are you saying, Brother Sanchez? You are light that entered a black hole at Eden. And that played out in the simulation as a sperm entering an egg on the earth. You were never born. You just put, uh, you entered the matrix. Everyone's game start with a birth. But your birth was a lie, Neo, just like Morpheus told you in the movie. Your mama's birth was a lie. Her mama's birth was a lie. The first humans wasn't born. They literally, and I know this going to get me in trouble. We come from a whole nother world where we created a simulation. And this was our simulation. We left that world and came into this world and it started with a birth. And we forgot where the fuck we come from. But we're gamers though. We're gamers. The ultimate gaming experience is the game that you don't know is a game. And that's what I'm saying, man. It's EA Sports, Electronic Arts, which is why I'm showing you this. This is what you really look like. Your flesh is your flesh. And again, this is your holy body. They call it the holy body. Why do they call it the holy body? Look at it. It's pierced with holes all in it. It's your voodoo doll with the needles poking it. It's the like you got to listen to these words that we be using and think why we use them, bro. He's the holy one. Why? He full of holes, man. He full of holes. He's holy. Look at him. He, he got they, they pierced him. He's full of spikes. He's literally a holographic projection. Your body is a projected apparition of the light of the soul. And, and if you can see it for what it is, it is indeed the holy one that is walking the earth. Yeah, he's full of holes. He, a dead man walking that look like Swiss cheese and, th and think he fucking alive. The, uh, we backwards because the, uh, the, the ancestors saw the earth realm as the world realm of the dead. That's why the word Saqqara is the word Shakara to the Egyptians. And it's a step pyramid representing the earth. And while I'm talking about that, I'm just, I'm, I, you know, why would I just talk about it and not show it? Let me, uh, let me show it. Let me show it. Um... Yeah, man, if you look up Sakara, it's Shakara, bro. That goes Sakara. That goes Shakara, Shakara. Look at them both. See, ain't nobody doing it like me, man, and I got to make that be known. The word Sakara is the root word of sarcophagus. The earth was seen as a big-ass burial ground full of souls that haven't been activated yet, which is why I played that clip by Bobby Hemet. Bobby Hemet said it best in that clip. He said, your soul is lying dormant in your body, just like Jack is inside the box. And when Jack pop out the box, that's when Jack is activated. The box is this holographic layering program that's around your body that you call in the koshas or the five chakras. 
the, the seven chakras, however you want to look at them. One, two, three, four, five. Look like the Egyptian had five of them too, like the Hindu. But you know, a lot of people don't count the crown chakra and root chakra because that's the sky and the ground. So that, that will give you seven. But I, I see how it can be either or, depending on how you want to play that. Some people don't count the crown and root chakra because those are like portals to go to a sin or descend. But um, it's like a front door and back door. But check it out, right? The Holy One, he's holy for a reason. And he's illuminated in light. And that's what I want to show you. That's really you knowing what your body is from you knowing that you are a projection of light or a flesh or flash. But the um, Yggdrasil dealing with the eggs. If you want to learn more about the eggs and the matrix, go and check out my uh, presentation. I got at least an hour and a half section where I break down the God Ishtar dealing with the matrix and the Demiurge Yahweh. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the matrix and the whole resurrection, the Easter thing. You're going to have to go get the presentation because I did a good job uh, with that. And actually, this collage comes from that presentation. So go check it out, man. Go check it out. Click that link that's pinned to the top of the chat or the one that's at the top of the video description. And on the replay, I'm going to pin it to the top of the comments, too, so it won't be no excuses for you to support your boy. Thank you in advance. So uh, let's just keep it moving. I'm at two hours in. I tell y'all what, I'll make a little deal with you, right? I'll make a deal. If everyone right now send one dollar to the cash app right so you, you got your documentary 45 bucks cool cop that now make it 46 bucks right i'm not like umar i just got something going on right now and uh i i think it's worth it now check this out support the day's show that's my tithing and donations i'm just like the church i don't ask for 10 percent but I ask everybody give a dollar just out of respect. That's four quarters, man. Like, that's just wiping your feet on my carpet. So send your dollar, daily dollar, to the cash app. I'm tripping, not a daily dollar, because that'll be $365 a year, right? <laughs> but, but anyway, let's keep going, man. I ain't got nothing pre prepped. I'm just freestyling, which is what's so cold about it. People like, damn, what if he prepared a lecture? Nigga, it'll be stupid. I did prepare one. It's called Yahweh the Conceiver. I keep telling you, go get it. <laughs> but yeah, let me clear off my board here. And, and um, hold on. Let me clear off my board here. I got a lot of stuff open. And uh, I'll do some more. So we'll see where y'all want to go from here since we at the two-hour mark. I'm going to drop, I'm going to do a poll. And if y'all want me to, if you want me to open up the calls, you'll be able to vote it. Or if you want me to just keep teaching solo, you'll be able to vote it. In just a second, let me clear this thing up. Because it don't matter to me. It, I got a democracy. I think what's dope to understand is that the powers that be, they didn't make none of this stuff around the world. They inherited, y'all. That's ancient stuff that was there before them. They built shabby shack towns. They don't even, listen, man, they, the deep shit about these temples, we used to get out of our body through this stuff. And now we go in there and pray and foam at the mouth to pagan gods that's foreign to the temple itself. And then we let the, them come in during the Harlem Renaissance and spray and just like the gangs, how they uh, do the graffiti and they cross out your shit and put their shit. That was what the Renaissance was. The Renaissance was all these fake ass uh, motherfuckers who can't build like our ancestors. They didn't even know nothing about this technology. They was dumb as fuck, dirt roads and horse carriage. And we were making stargates. They were getting sick 
spreading diseases. We was drinking the real holy water, which was electrically charged water that we programmed with good vibrations and good energy. That's what we did in the church, man. That's what the pipe organ was for. Why you think we play the organ? The organs was connected to them little bitty things you see on the side of the church. They look like big flutes, like chimneys. And the music and the, and the vibration of the church, it would have a moat around the church. That wasn't to protect against enemies, dog, because it wasn't nothing but a little bitty ditch. <laughs> Anybody can fucking go over that. That was because that was the real holy water. If people were sick, they can come to the church and drink that water. That water was programmed with songs, good energy. We know the experiment that the Japanese physicist did, Dr. Emoto, proved that water can be programmed with vibration. That was the concept of healing in the ancient world and holy water. People drunk water from the church, and the church was the original hospital. We didn't need medicine or nothing. People didn't get sick. They drunk highly charged water. We was into cymatics. We was into Tesla knowledge, thinks in terms of vibration and frequency. We were spiritual beings, and, we, and spiritual beings will master the physical world, and they won't, they'll master it on a level beyond your comprehension. So I don't care what nobody say. You ain't going to tell me that the motherfuckers, and yes, let me show you something right now. You're not going to tell me, right, that the uh, motherfuckers that built shabby ass, wild, wild west, wild west, wild west, come on, nigga. <laughs> Come on, my nigga, we talking dirt roads and termites, and you know how hot it was when that wood get wet and then it start that sun come out. We talking mildew. We talking disease. Boy, do you understand what we talking living in some shit like this? Because they didn't have the best wood treatment like what we got today. They didn't have the best wood treatment. I'm serious, man. You telling me that these wood workers, these Jesus worshiping carpenters was dealing with stone? Man, get the fuck out of here. They didn't build Mount Rushmore to years later. Fuck up out of here. You so listen, all of these stone wanders and cathedrals and temples we see around the world, you telling me these wood working ass lumbermen, these Paul Bunyan people did it? You a lie, dog. These people was wood workers. They were wood smiths. These are Pinocchio making motherfuckers. <laughs> and I'm telling you what I know because the Omex was carving big old stone heads. I'm going to say that again. The Mayan and the Omec was carving big ass stone heads and these people showed up working with wood. Boy, if you don't sit your ass down. <laughs> If you don't sit your carpenter ass down, we talking about the real masons and the stone workers, dog. And it wasn't them. This right here get under my skin right here. But let me do the poll. Side out. Let's 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 do the poll and see what the people want to do. Yeah, buddy, talking about they stole this and stole that. Niggas is looking at Egypt all the time. How, how y'all going to talk about that these white folks was the first Americans and they showed up making dirt roads and we had cement roads in South America? If you look at the pyramids down there in South America, you make it up to them by walking on a cement road. That's an ancient road. You talking about people that had cement roads working with stones and these folks show up and claim all that history and the land and these were some fuck. Bro, how did we get taken over by carpenters? Because them, I'm just saying, bro, how did carpenters take the fuck over, nigga? Because there was a reset. Something happened. And I wouldn't be surprised if some advanced technology that we created malfunction because some kind of way nigga and it was it's several people it's some america was just recently recreated man 
and it was just recently repopulated too. Now go look, research the Coney Island test tube babies. Bro, the population of America was so low just so little time ago. It's a big mystery. I'm going to go back into that. I got more streams on that. They ain't telling y'all the truth, dude. Some ain't adding up. Now, you got to think about this now. In the 1600s, this is what architecture looked like. But I'm telling you now, allegedly, the San Francisco City Hall been around since like the 1600s and 1500s. It's the oldest, one of the oldest buildings in Cali. And it's just been remodeled so many times. Now, if you look at the San Francisco City Hall, guess what you will realize? It's Tartarian architecture. It would have been out of place for the people that came here who said they built it because they was woodworking shabby town building motherfuckers. I'm just saying. The people that want us to believe that they built this great city hall in California, this is what they really built around it. But I want you to think how out of place that would have been, right? For you to be telling people, we built this, but you live inside of this. You can't lie to people that really do real research. You see what I'm saying, bro? You can't lie to people who know who the fuck they are and who their ancestors are. Can't nobody take my fucking history away from me. They can only take it to the people that's too lazy to do research. Because you expecting your damn enemy to give you your history. And he just gonna give you your indoctrination every time, nigga. You got to go get it out the mud. And that's what I don't like about niggas. Y'all want to get everything out the mud. But your history, nigga. Let's take a break. Now stop me when I lie. We'll get everything out the mud but our own history which been buried in the mud. You got to reach down there and pick it up, get it out and wipe it off and clean it off and present it to the world once you shine it up good. If you care about it enough, you will do that. That's what I'm doing with my ancestors' uh, teachings in history. I'm polishing it up, making it into collages, and showing the world how great they were. And I'm fighting the fight. And I want to thank everybody that know what we do and that this ain't no game with us and people think it's just some internet shit. And we really spiritual warriors fighting a fight that's harder than any physical fight, nigga. Your mind got to be strong to do this shit. You got to really be alone isolated by yourself with your viewpoints even with your own family and shit because everybody believe in the lie these people showed up and they came over here on 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 ships and i'm gonna show them and, and that's what make it so crazy now you know it's the fact that okay anybody in the chat room talking about anybody can build the San Francisco City Hall, I got to get you to smoke. Now, listen, I'm going to keep doing my solo teaching because my people voted. They said they don't want me letting nobody up. But with their permission, people, can I entertain one or two trolls that got smoke? Can y'all drop a one or say drop a two? Nope, nigga, no trolling. We want you solo. We want you teaching. Drop a two. Then I have to tell the trolls next time. We're going to see what happened. One, if y'all allow me to entertain a few trolls while I teach and beat and teach. Two, if you saying no trolls, Sanchez, we want the knowledge. We don't want nobody on the calls today. Y'all get to decide. Only vote one time, though. Be fair. A one or a two. Beat and teach. That's my peoples. That's what I'm talking about. It's kind of mixed up, though.
Yeah, they said we can get a little smoke on. Now, y'all got the... Yeah, they said beat and teach. Okay, so check it out, trolls. Come on up. Well, I ain't going to call you a troll. Opposition, come up. If, if you a Hebrew, if you got smoke with my Yahweh teachings, come up. If you think it's pseudoscience that our people built this land, you a fool. And I definitely want to beat and teach with your ass. Because guess what these pan that why I don't like these. <sighs> Let me take a deep breath, man. <laughs> you want to tell me why, why I don't like these hypocrites? Because, now watch this. These pan-Africans say, we built this country. And they talking about slaves getting off a ship picking cotton. Be and that's, what I, that's why I represent the aboriginal shit. Because when you say we built this country, nigga, there were big temples and cathedrals and castles that was on this land that the, that the pilgrims didn't build. These dumbest think that the pilgrims built this Tartarian architecture in America. And, and, I'm, and I'm telling you now, why, I, I'm going to show you. I really want the smoke with this San Francisco City Hall. Bro, I really want that smoke with you telling me I don't know what I'm talking about with that these people ain't build that. You know why? Because you giving these damn imposters too much credit. And you dumb as like to say, you give a white man too much credit. You giving it, you, you, you telling me that a man, listen here, man. Look at this right here. Check this building out right here, bro. This is the 1600s that I'm showing you. This is the 1600s. How, something don't add up, bro. Because in the 1600s, they was building this too. Something was happening in the 1600s, and they ain't telling us what happened. In the 1600s, that was an advanced society of people on the earth living right next to some primitive motherfuckers, and we swapped places with them. This is facts. That was some advanced societies living on this goddamn earth, and they was living right there next to motherfuckers who had dirt roads and horses. And the people with the dirt roads and horses stole all them people technology and patents and gave them diseases and reverse engineered it over time, and now they acting like data inventors and that they came up with all this electricity within just a few hundred years. Come on, doggy. Y'all was just using a damn rotary phone in the 60s. And now you building Stargates 50 years later? That ain't even, bro, that is, if come on, dude. Science, that ain't even mathematically possible. We're researching how it works. It takes time and development. You got to think about that, nigga. We just discovered aluminum fall in the 50s. And now niggas can upload their mind out their body. And you think science is advancing at a natural rate. Stupid. <laughs> Guess what, fool? That ain't science. That's reverse engineering. At the Operation Paperclip. N listen, this go before Operation Paperclip. Because they was take, they was, listen, they was getting control over a lot of valuable patents and documents from the ancient world. They didn't even understand what the fuck they had to generations later that they and now they call it alien technology. This the shit Tesla was getting into. I told you we invented Stargates before we invented cars. Now, I keep telling you this my smoke for these people. And if you got a YouTube channel, do a video and make this point. It's going to go viral. I'm going to share it. Fuck it. Yeah. Show motherfuckers the hypocrisy of. Wild, wild west architecture in the 1600s versus the architecture that was in. It don't match. I don't give a fuck what nobody say, bro. This don't match, bro. The people that was building slave shacks in the South, it, you got to keep in mind, it was castles on all of these continents, bro. It's castles all over the world.
Oh, oh, listen, this is what you got you, you to gotta think about this stuff. Watch this. You got castles in America, right? That goes back to the 1600s. And guess what? The stone masons built them, B. You got to understand some what I'm trying to, why I'm so passionate about this part of it, right? Because check this out. This is the mystery we need to be thinking about who these people in power are. Because they showed up in the 1800s building shit like this, y'all. You got to think now, in the 1800s, the white man was building stuff like this. And it was castles already here. Predating that shit. You think that the person built this little shabby shack, built this castle? This castle is from the 1600s. It's in America. All you got to do is pull up oldest castles in America. You will see that they've been around when niggas was building old shacks and shit. And now they want to say that they, they wasn't no stone workers. They not the real Masons, man. And that's what I'm passionate about, bro. And that's why I, whoever got smoke for that, bring it, bro. bro. Let's get the callers on. You think that the pilgrims were fucking stone Masons. They were Freemasons. That's a big difference. You, you think that the Freemasons are stone Masons. Them, them pilgrims, bro, I'm telling you right now. They wouldn't work in stone to the level of what we see in these castles. It's just stupid, bro. I'm just saying, nigga. And, 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 and on all of these lands, you can find stone-ass, big-ass foundations of shit that they was just not doing when, they, when, when the people went, and I'm going to just go and call it the way it is, when the people that inherited this fucking land inherited and that might be too nice saying that they inherited it when they stole it. Because check it out. Man, this right here is just so deep to me. Because nobody really go into this. Like, ain't no way you telling me that the people who was building these Paul Bunyan wooden ass shacks, cutting down all the damn trees and shit, that they they the ones built this shit too. See, that's why I'm glad I'm a flat earther because people don't be thinking outside the box. Something happened in the 1600s, dog, and these people that showed up, they it, it was no population in America. It was a ghost country. Think about, they even tell you that, right? Think about what I'm about to tell you real quick. They tell you all of the life was on the East Coast and we populated that first, and then they say, it wasn't no humans on the West Coast yet. That's what the pilgrims tell you. They say that the West was wild. And that wasn't, wasn't no humans there yet. You know why? Because they didn't see your people as humans. It was civilizations all in the Grand Canyon. It was people up. The West Coast been heavily populated with people. And if somebody want you, don't want you to know that they just stole all this land, they'll say, we found this land. They was acting like they were the founding fathers. You ain't find a damn thing uh, cause we didn't, b because we didn't lose it, motherfucker. <laughs> you just stole it. No, I found this. You stole that. We didn't lose nothing. See, my thing is this. You was written out of history. They got a dumb idea in your head that it wasn't no humans on the West Coast until the pilgrims came over here and started building shabby shacks. But when the pilgrims came to the West Coast, they already saw big-ass Tartarian buildings and shit, and they was like, whoa, whoa. They want y'all to think Indians was living in teepees, nigga. Indians had, nigga, you need to rethink your, your history. Because the people that was native to this land, they were Tartarians. They were advanced civilizations, Olmec, Mayan. They, what make you think? Think about this, right? The Olmec statue heads are big colossal heads carved out of uh, slabs of stones that weigh hundreds of tons. 
single slabs. And you telling me the person that carved that head live in a fucking teepee? <laughs> you telling me that the motherfuckers that created the, the Kuka Khan pyramid built this cement wonder of the earth and went to lay down in a damn teepee? <laughs> That's what you want this guy to believe, right? No, nah, bro, we're not stupid. over here at all. We're not stupid over here at all, son. And it, it never made sense. You telling me that a person that, that was working with stone on that kind of level was going to live in a damn teepee hut, a tent, a homeless man. Fuck out of here, bro. And I'm telling you, bro, the people that came over here, uh, 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 they were the ones living in the huts and the homeless shelters. And they giving us they motherfucking lame ass history. Imposters. The goddamn pilgrims didn't even know how to how, how, how to forge metal. Listen, man. When when we taught them how to forge metals, and, and listen, I'm telling you, bro, they couldn't have been forging metals if they was fucking uh working with wood and shacks. That meant you weren't working with no stones. And if you can't shape stone, you can't shape metal. Stone is kindergarten. You ain't finna tell me that you're, you're forging metals before the Omec. And when your people came, y'all was making wooden shacks, which make me ask, who the fuck are y'all and where did you come from? Now, people want to say, you know, white people, white people, dude, this deeper than white people. This is a specific group of people right here. And I'm going to tell you, it's very weird when you go looking into it because there were literally, it's, a lot of people say that these people use some technology to wipe the cause of men and reset. And they came up out of there on some men and black shit when they wiped your memory away and took over America. Ain't no real history of how we go from Omec and Maya to what we see today. The transitioning period don't make no fucking sense. And I'm showing you the holes in it now because the people that's coming that founded this new America, they the ones that was building shabby shacks, but they got a history that go back farther than their existence, which means they're forging their way into the past. Ain't nothing ancient about them. They just showed up building wooden houses, but they trying to connect to the history behind all of these castles and temples, and then they can inherit the land. Shout out to the people on the call. They told me we can get uh, some beating and teaching going on, but they don't really want people coming on just saying nothing or not contributing. Shout out to the brother Real Truth, Real Growth. Uh, you mm -hmm. want to, yeah, talk to the people, my brother. You got it. Welcome. Thank you for com coming. I'm going to drop the call link again, man. Man, my head all over the place about this thing. Uh, I was looking up something where they were growing, like, I mean, hundreds of thousands of babies in incubators back then, right? So whoever these people were had the technology to grow children. And uh, it was this one lady, she was famous for selling, like, so many hundreds of thousand people to Canada, like babies. And uh, uh, I mean, in America, she sold babies here, but they, they, these children, like the orphan, it was an orphan time. You get what I'm saying? You remember that? Yeah. I, I, I mean, you talk, yeah, we going into the history of the Coney Island babies, all that shit, when they had to repopulate bro. America. People don't even know bro. about that. Yeah. It's crazy, man. And, I think some of the people they, they sent over here, like these were uneducated people, robbery, thieves, all that stuff they sent over here. I think they sent a lot of cannibals over here too, bro. Some, and I'm going to tell you what I don't like, and, and, and we're not, we're, we're not going to entertain trolls no more because it's disrespectful to the ancestors. You're the ones that's trying to help them reclaim your fucking inheritance in history. Because the oldest structures on this land, whoever claim those can claim the land. They can show, and that's what I'm telling you. We can prove these people don't have the original history of this, this land. They don't connect with the Olmec statues and all that stuff. 
And I'm showing you when they came, they started building little shabby shacks. None of these other groups going to bring that up, real truth, but they said they care about black people and care about our history being restored. The fake imposters. The, I'm the coon that's doing the most work restoring the shit. They can show, and that's what I'm telling you. Because they agents, bro. Just like mm -hmm. Billy Carson, who we going to expose. Uh, we, we got him coming up. Oh, absolutely. And uh, yeah. I heard something else about the, uh, those um, uh, OMAG heads. I heard that they started digging under them and found that they were attached to bodies that were built on them. I mean, was that real or not? Because they said the head of it was sticking out of the ground, but they started excavating and they found body a body like the tall ass giants. You ever heard of that? Nah. Bro, I got a I got a screenshot of it somewhere. I can't find it right now. One day I'm gonna pull it up. But it just showed like these big muscular uh tall so giants look, in there. Mm -hmm. The only rule that the chat room got for the calls is zero trolling. They want me to beat and teach, they want me to keep teaching. But I know you brothers like to add on. I don't think they really mind y'all energy because y'all ain't really hurting the show. So we'll keep it like this, but I'll keep it at a minimum because we don't need to get chaotic. The people has voted, but shout out the real truth. My camera don't want to focus for nothing. Yeah, you got it. Who? Yeah, shout out to the people joining. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, man, I'm just saying, though, that uh, we went over a lot of shit today. And it's really dope. Yeah, man, these people are fucking I run across. They, they scared to think out of the box, man. And, and if they don't start thinking out of the box and just start looking at the possibilities of some of this stuff, what you're talking about, happen the way you're saying it, because it makes a lot of sense, you know? And, mm -hmm. I mean... <laughs> well, it's crazy, man. Yeah. Shout out to everybody on the call. You guys know about the Mormon church out in uh, New, uh, Salt Lake City, Utah? What about it? It's exactly one of those buildings. It's uh, this huge, magnificent, just Tartarian structure that's just out there in the middle of nowhere. And they claim the building like the 1800s. Yeah. It's a lot of that, like, they, they give us this fake history of America that it was just an empty-ass land with no people because everybody started in Africa, right? So there were no people on the other lands. <laughs> but when the people who taught you that, they teaching you that to make you an immigrant. And what's crazy is that they literally tie themselves to this land by claiming the old ruins and you can't claim them. How you going to claim it if you're an immigrant? Your people came from Africa. Your structure's over there, which is why they want to keep pointing you to Egypt. Their tactic is misdirection. Remember that right. movie, uh, Center of the Earth, Journey to the Center of the Earth? They got you thinking they digging down, but they trying to get to the North Pole. That's crazy. Everything they give you is misdirection. It's, it's the total opposite of what they say. Inverted. Yeah. Mm. Very much so. Shout out to everybody in the building, man. Flat motherfucking power to you all. And just keeping our foot yeah. on their neck, man. We fighting the fight, bro. We ain't even letting off. Um, hey, I did vote. I did vote for you to keep uh, just teaching, being a teacher. Because, I'm finna, man, uh, oh, that, that's exactly what I'm about to do right now. I saw that it was mm -hmm. kind of quiet. I said, let me open back up my screen shares and get back to work. I'm going to mute up. Yeah, I got a little break there for a minute. That's cool. Now, what to make this fun, though, if y'all hear, some, hear, hear something, you have a question, something interesting you want me to ask me while I'm going, feel free. But let's, uh, you know, keep it to a minimum. But, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, we can get off of that. We know that they didn't build this shit, bro. It, it just, that's a whole conspiracy within itself that the, the time frames and architecture in the 1600s is such a mystery because you got these shabby shacks and in the background you got these old great castles just sitting there and they trying to be like we was the first person here 
No, whoever built that big ass castle back there was here before you and you built the shabby shack and later on you figured out this grand level of architecture and you, you got your game up and that's why America start to build, build up later. That don't even make sense, bro. We got skyscrapers and buildings that are like way more advanced than the other surrounding shit that they was building though. Like with the shacks and the wild, wild west architecture. And then those people that was building those shacks, they later evolved to now start making this kind of architecture that I'm showing you. It's like they had to catch up. They, they was behind in architecture. And they had to fucking reverse engineer, get the old designs and blueprints from those advanced societies. And it took them a few generations. And lo and behold, now we're making fucking skyscrapers and shit. Hey, yo, Sanchez. But my thing I is, if before we was making skyscrapers, though, Ravon, it was skyscrapers already here. They call them castles. And they don't want to talk about that part. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, I, was, I was looking up these, uh, these patents. And you know how you said that... Uh, they stole uh they stole the the way to build these certain structures from other people. Like they it's a rule or regulations on patents that started in seventeen ninety. So that probably can go with what you're saying as well. I'm just saying, like, I never thought to do that until Ewar and them made that lost history of flat earth documentary. And they brought this shit up and it blew me the fuck away. I thought flat earth was the end all be all. You realize the rabbit hole go deep, nigga. Like, I never thought about that. Bro, when they was building shabby shacks and shit, it was stone castles and stone heads and pyramids in the background. And they trying to say, well, wasn't nobody on the West Coast yet. To the shabby shack builders showed up with they dirt road motherfucking having ass. And won't and like I said, a nigga gonna carve a big ass stone Omec head and then go live in a goddamn TP tent. Bro, I can't believe I fell for that shit, my nigga. I, like you I know, said, you yeah, 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 man, you, you got it, bro. I got some crazy shit, man. So you're talking about the serpent lady, right? The, uh, the serp serpent, uh, you know, women or whatever. The Golden Child movie with Eddie Murphy. He's got that scene where he rips the veil down and it's one of those creatures behind there. It's totally the snake lady. And then uh, you got Conan the Barbarian, freaking uh, James Earl Jones. He freaking could transform into a snake. He literally just turned him into a snake and shit. And uh, they were, it's all they worshipped was this, this whole serpent cult with you know the black sun and the you know the, the dragons eating themselves so and they, and they yeah they want they, us to be scared of it like yeah we worship snakes and serpents no y'all don't y'all study the kundalini why they studying our chi energy our kundalini energy they want us to think they worshiping the devil but they really studying us and if we find out that they're studying us we'll fucking start going within and being greater but we scared of our own self because they turned the knowledge of our energy into Satan, into devil, into fuck. You know what I'm saying? And it's just dealing with the serpent inside of us, man. Hey, they know that that's the energy that can go through the portals. They know that your Kundalini energy is the only thing that can go through the portal. That's why they that's why they uh, um, worship the Kundalini energy in the portal. That's all I was going to say. So James Earl Jones shot a venomous uh, snake like it was an arrow and killed freaking uh, Conan's love. Remember that shit? Still there? Well, I said, man, you know, I don't get, because I'm going to tell you something right now, too. If we in a simulation and this is a reset time, everything got to be reset. All of the industries and infrastructure. Guess what's happening now, y'all? Everything playing out for a reason. Like them police that just got killed in North Carolina. And everybody's celebrating it. People mad at me. 
because I said that's hypocritical. Celebrating the death of random police is fucked up. I'm going to tell you why. White people celebrate the death of random black people, certain white races. They say all of you niggers are violent. All of you niggers are a piece of shit. And guess what y'all tell them? Don't stereotype us. All of us ain't like that. Guess what we tell them? Every race got some fucking bad apples. And we don't like the bad apples in our bunch. Y'all can do what you want with them niggas because y'all helping us out. <laughs> they do just the opposite. They take the bad apples in your bunch and they give them a record deal. They make them a politician. They put them above you. They put your bad apples above you. Bill you see? Nozak. So, so thank you. Thank you. Right. So my thing is, you know, uh, it's just amazing because uh, what was I finna say, y'all? I'm tripping down. I was saying something about something. That's another reason we're I... Talking about the hypocrisy. We're talking about the hypocrisy of the people. By talking about those cops in North Carolina that got killed. Yeah, thank you. That's why I'm glad I got a panel on, too. Thank y'all. So check it out, right? Celebrating the death of random cops shows that y'all going to hell. It's stupid, bro. You talking about, I know females that get out of high school and go to the police academy, little scrawny, bony black girls. And they just think, and they doing some good for their community. And they want to be, I served in the military with black women, black men. These people ain't what y'all trying to say. You putting a target on all police. Here's what's going to happen. The people in power is they love that the masses hate the police. Now, look, y'all hate the police, but y'all love NASA. Y'all hate the police, but y'all don't hate Monsanto. Y'all hate the fucking police. You know why they making y'all like that? Because it's their agenda to get rid of the police and bring in AI and give this robot a gun. Now, once they get people hating police to the level that we are today, the average gangster will tell you, nigga, fuck the police. I'd rather have a robot come to the hood on Crip, on blood, cuz. On Crip, on blood, cuz. Oh, God. Check it out. They doing the same thing with black men. I'll be looking in the chats of some of these situations that be going on. This young dude, uh, you know, he murked this girl the, uh, in the parking lot in front of everybody. All, um, broad daylight, right? And so you see the people in the chat, they generalized. They were saying, stop dating these guys, right? They didn't say some of these guys. They said these guys. So it's throwing all these young black men under the bus that ain't got nothing to do with it. But, all yeah. this shit is part of the whole simulation with the eclipse just came. See, people, I don't talk about trendy topics. Guess what I talk about? World events. Now, you say, ain't that the same thing? Nah, bro. Because if I give it to you on some trendy topic shit, ain't no meat to it. I'm telling you, these big events that happen in the world got a spiritual meaning. You don't want to know the end goal of it. It's going to be some police shit every other month that make people hate the police because they ready for AI to police humans. And if you really woke and know what's going on, you know I ain't reaching. I've been right this far. I've been right the whole time. What make you think I'm going to be wrong on this one? That's facts. I, I, I'm, I, I see down the road. And I'm telling you, they want to get the human factor out of policing. They want to get the human factor out of policing. And they can do that with your consent the way they're doing now. Let me turn it over to my panel. Defunding I'm gonna the police. I'm going to say the comparison of that, like I'm saying, they trying to demonize so-called so black men over here. So uh, the next people up are the people that's coming over here. So, you know, people starting to look at us sideways even more in a different way. And I'm noticing it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a peaceful person. I, I'm out to help people. And, and they just demonize you off the top, man. <clears throat> I'm telling you. Um, it's a lot going on, man. But as above, so below. It's the same story. Somebody else could take the mic.
Wake in the minds. What's up, brother? You all there? Oh, I guess I got some crazy shit, man. So, oh, I'm, I'm here, man. I'm just parking, man. I, I got plenty. I want to ask bro some question about his uh, new documentary, too. So, man, y'all go ahead, though. Much respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, freaking. You guys ever think uh, what it's like for a person who was born blind to have a dream to dream? Because they have no uh, you know, sight. So how do they dream? Because it's the soul that's doing it. It's not the actual person. And then just because you have physical eyes, this physical body ain't you. It's just a vehicle. So yep. the soul can drink. But supposedly they uh, claim that they don't dream in sight. They dream in smell and feeling and uh, taste and, and hearing. That's that's how they dream, supposedly. So basically in their dreams, is never a place. Yeah. That's deep. Yeah, that's deep. And that shows right here. That shows right. That shows right there that this world is fake. Yeah, man. Because, yeah. <laughs> if you can't, if you can't imagine it without it, without seeing it, yeah, that's 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 a dead giveaway. Yeah, it's and, almost a sensation. Mm -hmm. Hey, but without wow. saying about, I, I, I gotta roll me something to smoke, man. I know my parents man. don't mind, yeah. Man, my folks got the hemp wrap. Got the hemp wrap. Go ahead. No, I was just saying he got them hemp wrap wraps, man, not the nicotine ones, right? Yeah, I got <laughs> the hemp wraps now, man. I got the. I'm trying to make all the wise decisions, my nigga, for sure. Yeah, you don't know what they putting in our shit, man. You know. Damn right. You know, we've been, you talking about you're an Aboriginal, you're an Indian, and you ain't smoking out of hemp, then you a fraud because we smoked out of hemp, didn't we? Hell yeah. So I got to stay with that hemp gang, man. What my, if you, if you smoking right now and you ain't using hemp, we ain't mad at you, but y'all gonna get with the hemp gang eventually, though. We gonna got to join that hemp gang, baby. Supposedly, they used a lot of hemp. Back in like uh, World War Two, <clears throat> like they they just had like fields and fields of it. They used it for a lot of purposes, but uh, I don't know. I have to look into it again. That was one of America's main crops, other than the oh cool shit. Okay, hey, hey guess stuff. what? Hey, y'all want to hear some funny shit, yo? I put my foot in my mouth. I don't even have hemp right now because I had ran out of my hemp and had to get a fucking little pack of white owls so let i just put my foot in my mouth nigga this gonna be a nigga a uh, white owl blunt. but if it would have been hemp though get that hemp baby <laughs> hey i used to do the white owls white owls the phillies or the swishes then i got into uh uh, uh dutch rest and i but, hey yeah. bro, bro what let me let me say this bro because here go the whole conspiracy part now that I got a bunch of minds to throw this shit around. Because I know what my people like. They like this deep shit, think tank shit. Check this out. I'm going to pick all of y'all brain. There's no other explanation for what happened in the 1600s other than some kind of advanced technology existed then that caused the mini reset. Because if you look at the architecture in the 1600s, it was like castles, skyscrapers. They even had electric sidewalks. And after that, we fucking ended up with wooden shacks and camel horseback riding on a horseback and shit. You see what I'm saying? Thank you. Yeah, I think that's what I'm saying. They tear buildings down too, man. Hey, hey, Sanchez, on for real, on some real shit? <clears throat> I think at that time it was some advanced beings that were using those portals and they caught on to these people, whoever they were that came over here and they didn't want these people to, you know, learn how to use the technology and figure that they just won't come back here. I think they left. I think they left so these people wouldn't get the technology, you know, and learn how to use the technology so they can use it. You it get what I'm saying? Like, because 
they said that America wasn't heavily populated, and I agree with it because there's pictures in the 1600s where they taking pictures of the United States, and there's literally no fucking humans in a row. It looks scary, bro. They got entire right. pictures of San Francisco during the daytime with nobody out downtown like a ghost town. People's like, what happened in America? Now, guess what I'm telling you? What if that was like some sort of big exodus to where an advanced society not too long ago beamed up a group of people off the earth to go like to another parallel universe or back to the base reality of some sort? And after that, we had to repopulate this bitch because if we was using stargates, like you said, let's just say an alarming number of humans fell into a stargate and the earth needed to be repopulated. Now, guess what the Bible say? The Bible say that the ground opened up and was swallowing people. We like to think of sinkholes and shit. But think of this. The CERN people said if they open up this portal, our entire universe can be sucked in it. And they saying that, and I'm going to tell you what I think. I think that light can't escape a black hole. And if our universe is holographic light and they open up a black hole, what you think going to happen? And they telling us that in their own words, that we live in a hollow sphere made of light and CERN going to open up the black hole sun, the CERN, and, and like, that's that Ghostbusters technology when they suck the fucking ghosts into the fucking cube and shit like Y'all, like, let's talk about it, bro. They, it, it was Jesus like, plasma. yeah, like, some, it sound crazy, but that was literally a point in America where it was like a ghost country. Then we repopulated it. We lost the technology. Then we got it back on some men in black memory stick, hit the button shit or some shit like a reset. I think they went to another ring. I think they got the hell out of this ring and went to another ring. That's what I think. And then and then your boy Admiral Berg and everybody start trying to figure out where the fuck they went. So that's why they started going to the, to the, North, to the North Pole. Yeah. Looking for evidence and shit like that. Then they say they found this big ass pyramid out in the North Pole and uh, all kinds of portals. Same kind of wheels over there too, but it was no people. I think they just left this area. I think they left this ring, the last ice age. They got the hell out of here. And my beef with all of these fake pro-black historians, they not even reclaiming their fucking heritance, which is why they don't want to deal with flat earth. Ain't no way you going to regain your ancient inheritance not fucking with the mystery of those step pyramids and what these structures represent. They represent a old galactic federation of advanced societies that knew that we were spirits and bodies and they were spiritual technology. If you let the white, and I ain't going to say white man, if you let mankind, the artificial man, act like he's God, because this is what I think, bro. I think what's in power is artificial intelligence. And all of the real humans already had our glory days and golden days. And AI want to rebuild its own world where it's the creator of everything. But in the old world, we invented everything. But now this AI and power want to reinvent everything to serve its will. So it's going to make the same technology, same shit we had, but program it to serve it. Whereas we used all this stuff for you to serve yourself and activate your own potential. The AI use it like a vampire so that it can use your energy for it. Right. Serving it, you the energy that it needs to be in operation. Yeah. So it got it got to trap you mentally because they know mentally uh, that soul controller is the mental. So they got to lure you in. So they dumb you down and then they get you to come in voluntarily. And then look, that's why the gods that they worship all carry a siphon, which is think about it. If I was a fucking vampire, guess what I would walk around with this. You never thought about this. Watch this. If I was a vampire. I'll walk around with one of these. A hook. You know what? All of they gods walk around with that hook. That's a fucking siphon. 
Atom is the first man, Adam, in the Garden of Eden. That's why he got a Santa Claus hat on, the center of the earth. That's your Santa hat. Eden. Atom is eaten. The Garden of Eden is the Garden of Atom. I'm telling you, that's their way of saying that we are in a simulation that an old pharaoh in Egypt created. Right now. Listen. I don't give a fuck if you in Alabama, Las Vegas, California, Canada. Guess where you are? You're in ancient Egypt. Our whole world is a supercomputer that's in ancient Egypt. So I don't give a fuck where you go in the world. You're in ancient Egypt. And I'm te- that's one of my theories that we're stuck in a simulation that the earth god Adam or Atum made. He was given power over the earth dominion. That is Yahweh or Yaldabaoth, the siphoning God that can only power his simulation with human souls by sucking your soul out your body. He got a siphon too. What, listen, we was just talking about depopulation. Where did all the people go? Look at Moses on his collage. Moses led supposedly hundreds of thousands of people through the wilderness. That's a whole fucking major city that just vanished. So we go to these places today and we be like, yo, when did the people just up and vanish? Okay, let's say that we was opening up portals like Moses and the people walked through it and crossed through the other side. And guess what Moses did? Drop the water back down. Now they can't cross back over. That's what happened to the people. They got trapped in another layer of reality divide and conquer i'm telling you there's a sort of deity on this earth dividing and conquering us humans and trapping us in different dimensions of time the old people are separated from the young people that's deep like they got music they like we got music we like and the young people today they in their own universe a universe is based on cymatics, sound, culture. You can't get jiggy to the music that your children get j- jiggy to. They separate our spiritual energy into different dimensions. Your vibe attract your tribe. And why the fuck don't my, uh, my and my children in the same tribe? Because we don't got the same vibe. They got demon time. I got baby booming music is what they call it. They separate everybody with frequency, vibration on all levels. And I'm just going to blabber on and hope that the people with eyes to see hear what my ass saying right now. But yeah. Yeah, you divided by generations of different types of music, different types of ideas. Uh, they retract certain knowledge and information. They start hiding that, rewriting that shit. Yeah, it's crazy. That's exactly how they do it. And that candy cane right there, that shit looks just like your skull and your spinal cord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's that barber pole, the Berber pole, for real. And that's crazy. I've been a barber all my life. Yeah, that's that serpent wrapped around the pole, that barber pole, that red and blue shift, magnetism. Yeah, they per- that's the North Pole. It's the Barber Pole. They personified the North Pole as Yaldaboeth. And that's why I made that collage. Let me pull it back up for you real quick. Here we go right here. I'll put that up. We're going to put some eye candy on the screen throughout the show. We appreciate y'all, man. Shout out to my Cash App donors, my Patreons, my channel members on Golden Wings Media, my channel members on Flat Motherfucking Power TV. We're going to be going live on Golden Wings Media and Flat Power TV. Shout out to my channel members, my Patreons, and all of my supporters. I appreciate y'all. I don't take it for granted. We're going strong today, and we'll be up early tomorrow. We'll be at Back Bro Sanchez TV at 2 o'clock to talk about Jacob's Ladder and Jacob wrestling with God at Pine Hill. Join us. Salutes to my panel. Let's turn the mic back to the panel. Drop a one if y'all saying that the panelists we brought on was a good addition to the show. Good energy. Keep no trolls. Because I was hoping to get smoked. That's what they was hoping. But it's cool. Y'all actually cool, man. Salutes to everybody. I can't see the polls. I hope I'm doing a good job up here for the people.
Yeah, but uh, a lot of times, um, Sanchez, we, when you get to talking, man, you get so deep, man, everybody else be, just be in their own mind. You don't have too much to come back on. Plus, you got the collages, you know, that mm-hmm. take your mind. It'll ask me, I tell you what, pick my brain. Ask me anything you want, cause it don't. It, it's only gonna make me dive deeper. I love questions. It sends me on a quest. And uh, yeah, what I'll do, I'll put different collages up too as we go. But yeah, I had to show you about Serapis. Um, you know what I mean? Even when you say Serapis, he's wrapped up in a serpent. That's what the wrapping part come on for. Wrapping, you know, Serapis, and uh, so. Boom, all of that. I mean, you can look this over. It's the same deity in many forms, man. And again, in Mario, that little step pyramid castle, that Babel Tower, that's in Mario too, since we talked about Mario earlier. So, um, dude, what about Gilgamesh, right? Yeah. I never, I never knew that Gilgamesh was freaking... Big enough that he that he held held lions, and they got so many different carvings of him. I thought there was like one carving. There was like ten different carvings of the same thing of Gilgamesh holding a lion. Mm-hmm. Gilgamesh wrestling with the beast is like Jacob wrestling with God at Pineal. It's this whole thing about slaying a dragon, wrestling a serpent. And what slaying the serpent or slaying the dragon is all about, it's about the mind mastering the body. If the mind lives in the body and the body has more power than the mind, the mind will feel insulted and it will come back into the body to beat it. Your mind is a competitor. If it lives out its lifetime in the body and it did the will of the body, it's going to reincarnate to try it again, and it'll never stop till it beat the body. It, your mind will never leave this simulation till it literally say, ah, now I beat you, body. I did what I wanted to do and not what you wanted to do, body. Man, that's some deep shit. I was just sitting up today, and, and you know how we think outside the box, right? I was saying, like, certain things just not going the way I wanted to go. I was like, I wonder if my damn soul done left my damn body and I'm on autopilot. Now, that's a wild-ass thought to have, right? But I remember when I used to take uh, Taijutsu, right? Because I had been doing gymnastics all my life. My sensei told me, he was like, man, you, you already mastered your body. He was like, you just need to learn the techniques, the different techniques, you know, the styles of the fighting. So... Maybe my soul already mastered my body and hauled ass. I don't know. I've lived through a couple of accidents and lived to tell about it. That I shouldn't well, the thing, the thing about the soul having more dominance in the body is that you know when you're there because what happens is you will find yourself just addicted to deep conversations. And you will find mm. yourself being into the, like, you will feel like you ain't, you can go about your day and eat good drink good, but you will still feel hungry if you didn't have a deep conversation. It's like this new appetite you get for knowledge and you got to feed it. It's like, damn, where did this beast in me come from? It's like, if I'm not researching or getting into some deep in a while, I'm going to get depressed. Like a nigga that got to quit cigarettes. If I got to quit having these conversations and being deep like this, I literally have withdrawals, nigga. And that lets you know you transforming, you being hooked on this new drug called consciousness. But that ain't feeding your body, that's feeding your soul. Your soul Bro. don't your soul don't say I'm starving cause you didn't eat a cheeseburger. It say I'm starving cause you didn't tune in to Bro Sanchez today. <laughs> No, let me stop. Let me stop. Because that's real shit. This is exactly what was going on before the show came on. Before I tuned into it, because I was looking at the game, and I, I didn't, I didn't get, my, I didn't pay attention to my notification. I didn't hear it. But just this whole day was like a fucking sag, and I was like, damn, I need to pick me up because it's hard to find people that think outside the box. Uh, especially I'm in a new area, and at the age I'm at, I am man, people are just spread everywhere. But anyway, true shit. I was having that experience that I was just, it was something that I needed that picked me up, that intellectual conversation. And the show came, bro. And 
It ain't that ain't saying, yo, you on Sanchez dick. Nah, it's exactly what you just said, bro. Just that that mental food, you know, that mental conversation, that mental wrongness, you know. It came from anywhere. Yeah. Some shit. You know that you know that you there because it's like this fascination. And it will actually have you going through problems in life. People say he just obsessed with all this deep shit about chakras and fucking serpents and like I don't, I'm just trying to get this money, nigga. Like that's how you know you're there. Like you, you've uh, graduated mm-hmm. to this level to where, man. Sometime I'll do twelve hour streams and won't eat to the end of it. That's and deep. it's just it's hey, just yeah. the fact that. I be so obsessed and passionate into the shit. I don't want to leave the bike and I just push it back. And I did that in church a lot too, because we would go to church and they would have these long ass services. And at the end of the service, you can stay for like little studies and shit. So you, you, we spent hours in the church and we would leave the fucking church and we would go to like a buffet and we would tap some shit up. Then was the days. I ain't gonna lie. And it was kind of like we fasted. We was we was eating that word, man, eating them scriptures. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, by the time you get out of all that shit, you be, we go in there and tear some shit up, man, in that buffet. Church people in buffets in the South, nigga. All right. Hey, yeah, so, like, when I'm looking at the show or if I come on the show or whatever, like, I got a certain place that I sit and... Uh, like my ex used to always wonder, why the hell are you always in the bathroom on that show? You always looking at the internet, but she be talking about when when you be having the long streams and shit, right? Like I got I got patience like shit. I've been a barber, so you gotta pay attention to all kinds of detail. And even when I was detailing cars and shit, like it'll take me a long time. People are like, why you take so long? I'm, I'm just a detailed person, so yeah. Uh, man, this shit right here, this conversation right here needed to be had by me mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. Yo, man, shout out to everybody. Go and get my new presentation, Yahweh the Conceiver, How the Age of Metallurgy Forge Human Consciousness. Check me out, man. You will not be disappointed. And matter of fact, if you get the documentary and you're disappointed in it, uh, let me hear your feedback to know what I could have done better, for real. And to the people that, that haven't, listen, I haven't gotten it yet. I'm going to get it. I've just been dealing with my little issues financially, but I'm coming out of that. But it'll be there. Don't, man, people don't understand, like, yo, bro, like, you know, people listen to these names like Einstein and be like, damn, what if I was back there with that guy and this and that? Man, y'all right here with this guy. Mm-hmm. This shit right this here. Big mm-hmm. facts. Hey, much respect here. Oh, God. It's Much like, respect. yo, it's like, yo, you witnessing a Bible or something like that unfolded in front of your eyes and you just ain't catching on to it right now. What you got right here, what you got in this show, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's, it's what you got in this person that's, that, that cracked their mind open to bring you something that was already here that was hidden. So take advantage of it. Niggas be in here fighting and trolling like, yo, this is so stupid. Yo, it ain't time to be unintelligent right now. It's not time it's, for it's, that. It's like a group of people came onto this earth as some kind of cancer, though. It's like we was building a Tartarian utopia of electromagnetism, green spiritual tech, and that these <laughs> archons, these fucking artificial intelligence or whatever they are, mankind, they came out of nowhere and just started building McDonald's, Burger King, church, mosque, Muslims. I'm serious. It may sound crazy, nigga, but if you look around the world, right, if you look at all of these ancient sites, right, do this, do this, do this right here. Go around the world, look at all of these ancient sites, and look at the surrounding cities that's around them. You will say, yo, this shit out of place like a motherfucker. The world we building on top of the ancient world don't even resemble the ancient world. It resembles some alien shit. So I'm telling you, something happened on this earth, nigga, to where everything changed overnight. The people, the architecture, what was valuable. It's almost like an alien invasion happened. The aliens landed, dumbed us down, wiped us out, boom, and, and harvested the rest of us. 
for energy. And here we are today or some shit like. And that may sound crazy, but it's a lot of movies with this script. It's some truth to all these movies. We can't explain I'm these many resets, man. Like, I'm, I'm just saying, yeah. How about, how about they found a way to get to each one of these portals and, like, simultaneously destroy them motherfuckers at the same time? Like, they was breaking some shit. They didn't realize what they was breaking. And that shit just set us back so fucking far. I'm going to tell, tell you what I think they was breaking. They was breaking our bond with the ancient knowledge. That's the Ark of the Covenant. That every generation got to teach the young generation behind it the truth so they can be free. And at the moment the generation before us start lying to us, you create a slavery system. Now you're sending your children into slavery by indoctrinating the masses. Instead mm -hmm. of back in the old world, every soul was given the knowledge that it was a fair shot. So if your ass didn't make it, you couldn't blame it on nobody because everybody got the same divine knowledge. But today, the reason you don't get a fair shot is because they don't teach everybody the same shit. They teach they people all the deep truth and knowledge about reality. They give you the indoctrination. Somebody got to be on the bottom. When it comes to these resets, bro, I'm like, they definitely talking about all of this, like you said, in shows, because I'm just sitting here just even watching different shit, like the 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 shit right now that they talking about, what we talking about right now in is the uh, that new X-Men 97 cartoon series that they came out with. Like, right, right. They, they whole series of motherfuckers coming from the future to prevent AI from the past from taking over and growing and making itself merge with humankind to become biotechnology and shit like that. They talking about all the shit we talking about right now and they calling they shit master mode. They, hey, Q. About, they tell the motherfuckers take out this nigga brain and put a computer in his brain. Hey Q, guess how they doing it? So they use an AI and they program AI to say what they wanted to say, and then they used the voice or the soul of the person before. Like, like they right. did, uh, Drake, Drake did a Tupac and fucking Snoop uh, shit. Right. And this is what I'm saying, though, right? They, like, you know, by, by showing us what they're showing us, just like Bro Sanchez said, it's just like how the Masons do shit where in order to wash their hands with shit, they got to say, you can't say I didn't tell you or give you the tools or whatever in, in a subtle way, so my hands is clean. It's like they telling you ways to fight what they doing, even in the show. It's like they would allude you to the thought or the theory that we got motherfuckers fighting for us on our side, just like it is what they doing. As in like our little, our, the, our descendants that we got in the future and shit like that is doing shit, going back and forth, chasing these motherfuckers through time loops and having wars that we don't even see and know about. Mm, it's, so. like, it's like up to us to catch up to them to make it manifest to us and for us to see it first person. So bro, do you remember the uh the villains on John Car on John Carter? Say it again. I said, I said, do you remember the villain on John Carter, the movie? Yeah, yeah, I, I, that was great. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that like it's like that. A bunch of uh, basically a bunch of old, uh, uh, sexually deviant, mentally deviant uh, people with high uh, uh, sciences. You trying to use them against us, but at the same time they're using you against themselves. Yep, it's like at a certain point, like Bro said, the split came where motherfuckers decided to. Merge they themselves self with technology <laughs> and choose to go down that path versus just stay the natural organic way of life. And that's kind of where we are now with the split and everything <laughs> being divided. It's like what's gonna become with that and what's gonna, you know, phase out and do the nature thing. And I tell you this too, sexual deviancy is something that I think come from mankind and not man. Now man, early man look down at sexual deviancy. Mankind used his propaganda and media to teach us that sexual deviancy 
was actually being freaky. It mean you really, I'm so attracted to this person that I'm going to do foul shit right now. That, that, they really fooled us because the most sexual deviant we got, the more freaky we said we was getting. I just want to freak you, right? Because I love you that much. But that lead to me doing things where we don't procreate. Think about this, right? If humans were mating to reproduce ourselves, but there was an artificial human among us, it wasn't mating to reproduce itself. It was just having casual sets. If there's a mankind or artificial intelligence, it's only fucking to look human, but it produces itself through a Stargate portal. It produces itself in an in a, in a assembly line, a manufacturing line, where they making a body and putting a soul into it. It's a fucking machine. It don't got to fuck. It don't got to have sets to reproduce itself. So the first form of casual sets would have been from the machines. It would have been, I mean, if, if sets was a tool for you to reproduce, you wouldn't have a lot of time to explore it for the nature to where you become deviant. That seemed like a creature would go that far with it who ain't using it just for the simple tool of procreating. Because you got all this time on your hand to explore deviancies when a person, a regular human, just saying, I'm trying to make another human. I'm trying to increase my squad and get my number po power in numbers. I want a village. So there's this movie, uh, there's this movie Screamers, right? Where literally these tiny little machines, they, they come through the ground and they jump up, uh, jump up and, and kill everyone. But then these machines actually somehow make humans of them you know they're actually robots but they look just like humans and they use little kids so that uh you know the humans feel bad for them and let them in but then they just unleash hell uh it was a pretty good movie man it was old but it's called screamers hey hey sanchez hey mm -hmm. how old how old do you think the word mankind is it's just as old as the simulation because think about it, the mankind concept means that when we say simulation, we're talking about the word simulation means something that's similar to something else. So if we're in an earth that's similar to the real world, but it ain't the real world, it's a simulation. There must be the concept, if there's a concept of a similar place, there has to be a concept of a similar place being everything got to go from macro to micro so if i can clone africa and create africa in a computer then the people walking around africa i can clone them too and put them in a computer my thing is this right here i am not the clone but the clone existed in the simulation before me but i existed in the universe before the simulation i'm god but now check this out, right? What I'm telling you is this. AI is a similar, they similar to human, but they not. When you play Madden, ain't nobody to play with. You play the computer. Playing against the computer is similar to playing a human, but it ain't playing a human because you still know, even though the computer can be some good competition, it plays like the computer. The computer will punt on fourth and one. The computer will punt the ball on fourth and two. If you plan any human, they running that ball up the middle. But the computer is programmed to punt on fourth down. So it can be similar to a human opponent, but it ain't going to make those decisions that a real human know you need to go for that one yard. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. or So that's what I'm saying about... That's what AI is to humans. And, and, and just like there's a base reality and a fake reality, there's a real nigga and a fake nigga. We've been saying that before the ghetto. We was yeah. trying to figure out who was the real ones versus the fake ones back in Babylon because we invented AI that was indistinguishable from humans. We wanted to know the real from the fake. Yeah. Hey, real, real quick, Sanchez. 
there's a uh, there's a joke going around on uh, on the internet, <clears throat> and it goes it goes like this: uh, condoms are created on an assembly line, and the assembly line is controlled by AI. So technically, uh, AI uh, computer machine assembly lines are the biggest contributor towards depopulation. Boom. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, just think about it. If I was an artificial intelligence trying to blend in with the masses, I would fucking make them hate everything about their humanity while I reverse engineer that shit. And guess what's so crazy about it? I would definitely try to control their population. And there you go, man. You know, so that's the everything that's going out on the earth is the will of God. And God is an artificial intelligence like Siri that, that the people in power are going by. Like when we say the presidents are reading from a teleprompter. Who wrote the shit on a teleprompter? Let me explain to you. They got the fanciest algorithms in the world. The government been letting y'all be saying in the future the robots going to rule over humans. Guess what? We have been there, bro. Everything the president do is follow an algorithm. Y'all think that the president got a cabinet of humans that tell him the best decisions to make? Guess what? They got a computer program that they type a problem into it, and it gives them a bunch of solutions. And the solutions that the AI give the president, no human could have thought of that. They already beat us in chess, bro. They beat our best chess players. Why would you have a human ruling the world? When you can have an algorithm ruling the world, but you can have a human be the face of it so people won't go crazy and think that robots already ruling. But I'm telling you, everything already automated, even the government. So you telling me the ruler of the world is algae rhythm? The rhythm of L go rhythm. The rhythm from the god L that makes the AI go. Gives them chi. Don't you know the chi means to go? So al go rhythm. The rhythm of L that drives artificial intelligence that's actually trying to hijack the body of man and control them too, like we one of its drones. No, nigga. I'm a real one. Damn. Damn, you fucked me up with that one. Hey, they get ready to do some other shit too, you know. Uh so Tesla, everybody using the electric cars now, right? <clears throat> They got these new cars that GM get ready to use, and they are air air turbine. They're air yeah, air they, cars. Man, listen, let me give you some. These people can type in a computer. What scenario do they need to carry out to make X, Y, and Z happen? Do you know how many days and arguments it'll take doing that in a room with a board of members? Mm -hmm. Computers been running the government for a long time. They ain't doing what they, they following an the algorithm, just like everybody on social media. We following the algorithm. It ain't no human telling us to do that. It's the AI fact checkers, the algorithm. YouTube don't even got real people uh, enforcing the guidelines. They got AI doing it. And so we're following AI, not just the YouTube content creators, the government too. Yeah. It's just like in the, those bomb, not bomb movies, but those MI, MI3 movies, stuff like that. They would, get their, they would get their information from these little pieces of paper they would read. They already get printed out. Well, well, you know, something interesting on the, uh, on the um, Men in Black movies, if you watch the first one, their AI system was ran by an octopus type of um, what is it called? An octopus like race of aliens. And like that could be uh, 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 what is it? That could be representation of quote unquote Cthulhu, right? So like maybe they had, maybe Cthulhu ain't some spiritual being like we all think. Maybe Cthulhu's a a, 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 a and, and let me say this too. Nobody in the Hebrew community, I want y'all to mark this on the record. And while, while we scream flat power and we scream that shit loud and proud, right? Nobody in none of these communities will debate me on the fact that the pilgrims that they saying 
them pilgrims didn't build ancient America. Now, look, don't you know that Dane Calloway, all these aboriginals and shit, they go on a war with the Pan-Africans. But see, even when it comes to the aboriginals, they trying to prove the first Americans with bones. And I'm saying, look, let the stones speak for themselves. Our ancestors left their energy here in the form of colossal statues and shit. Why would you try to mix your shit with the white man? That's why I don't fuck with Dane Calloway and all them niggas. They still using bones, but they'll get mad at the Pan-Africans for using the Lucy bones. Then they'll pull up the oldest bones in America. So my I, thing... I yeah. I didn't know Dane was using bones. Hell yeah, I debated Dame on that because I had a fucking debate against Chief Holiday and Dane Calloway took that nigga side. And I, the, 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 hold up, listen, let me break down to you. The debate was, can we use bones to prove our like ancestors history on this land or something like that? Sister Bethy was hosting that shit. So people said I won a debate, they voted. But at the same time, Dane went on my side. He was on Chief Holiday's side. And he was like, you can use bones. And, you know, it's information. And it's and I'm like, man, okay, this nigga here just got popularity. And he, he really will just use his popularity. Because how the fuck y'all getting mad at the Africans for using Lucy bones, but y'all, listen, y'all don't remember when I was roasting the aboriginals? Cause they, this is what they was doing. They was pulling mm. this up. They was pulling up Chatter Man. Let me show him to you. I was roasting them on that. You don't remember? Man, Look. I don't remember Dane being involved though. I didn't know that. Damn right. Cause Damn. He, he got caught in the crossfire. Cause you know him <laughs> and Chief all, uh, listen, they ain't cool with a lot of them aboriginals. I was saying mm -hmm. to myself, this will show if they ain't a real one. Because even though that's Dane homeboys, he'll say, Sanchez right on this one, man. We can't be using bones and shit because we telling the Pan-Africans not to. And Dane literally did the ultimate mistake and beat a hypocrite. He started <laughs> saying you can use Cheddar Man and all that. And I kept bringing up Lucy. Like, y'all getting mad at Lucy, though. And that's when I realized that Dane will bend and sway for his homeboys on some Sarnetta shit. Just broke my heart, bro. That's crazy. You know, you would think that, you know, you're covering your ground very well. And man, this know, Nick, listen, bro. Hold my bad for cutting you off real quick. I got smoke mm -hmm. for top cats too. Bro, I got smoke for all these aboriginals, man. Because to me, I'm going to tell you why. They the fake ass hit ancient history to this land. Them niggas, it's all about talking about you can go through the government with certain paperwork and shit to reclaim this shit. And I'm saying that's a fucking lie. That's what the Pan-Africans saying. Everybody trying to push a way through the system to reclaim it, to say the reason your ass at the bottom because your status ain't corrected or something like that. Now, remember, Dane Calloway was selling sovereignty status correction. Mm. Mm. Yeah, bro. Listen, I respect them niggas, but I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell yeah. the truth about this shit. Now, I ain't going to lie. I'm not like them, bro, and I don't give a fuck if a nigga get mad. They ain't going to click my link because they know I'm going to keep it real. Top cats fucks with Rod Hayes. All of these niggas is feather hat wearing niggas, but they don't really connect our people to what our ancestors was on. They still going to make you go beg the government for your liberation. When I'm telling my people we can get our power back in a few years if we start back being critical thinkers like we used to because they reverse engineering all our technology. And you know we some critical thinkers because I'm a nigga from the Bible Belt that I posted died in the church and look at the shit I'm teaching now. You know what I owe this to? My critical thinking skills. I owe this to the mind. 
that the most high gave me, nigga. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. I'm a nigga that was born in the Bible belt believing in Jesus. And look at what I got for sale right now. Look at how deep this is, nigga. Look at my, my yeah. motherfucking syncretism. I didn't know I was going to wake up to this. All I knew is I practiced critical thinking because I really want to know the truth. And it led me out, which lets me know if anybody honestly go on that journey, they'll end up where I'm at. So if a person get recycled, I can't really feel sorry for them. I got to say, man, that person don't love they self enough to use the, their own mind that the creator gave them. And and for anybody who's listening, this this solves the the the, um, the question why why it, we got all this knowledge now why we ain't all came together because these niggas still separating the people they got their whole groups of people over there that could have been came and joined with us on our truth shit but man it's gatekeepers out there damn keeping the people separated and divided I, I told you, you and, and I'm gonna take because you got Pan Africanism and what the Aboriginals are. Pan, um, they say it's, it's Pan-Americanism. They saying the first people started in America and that the Africans learned from the Americans. And the Africans saying, no, they started in Africa, then it went to America. So the power, that's like, that's like the Democrat and Republican game. It don't matter which one you choose because long as you ain't saying life started at the North Pole, at the center, and then expand it out with like a Petri dish. That's the original Pangea concept. That's the Big Bang concept. And once you get into how life just expanded from the center and expanding the universe, think about how hypocritical this shit is, y'all. Just hear me out for a minute, right? I'm going to give you a 30-second dagger. Our science teach that we live in an expanding universe. But they teach that it started expanding from Africa instead of from the center outward. Anybody that know anything about expanses, matter of fact, let me screen share. I'm going to teach you this shit. Watch this. This is how expanses work. This is how expanses work. Let me show you. This is an expanse right here, an explosion, right? Let me ask y'all something. Ain't that mushroom cloud growing from a trunk just like that tree branches is, which is why I made this collage? Ain't that's what we observe here? This is real science, right? by the way. Observation. So Absolutely. if our universe, according to the Hebrew, is what we see in the top right corner, that's your original Big Bang exploding, expanding universe, what I'm giving you. Any kind of explosion like that will make a mushroom cloud. Life is an explosion. Listen, shit don't explode, right, in no other pattern. This is how energy releases itself. Now, the reason I put this up, right, reason I put this up, right, it's because... You can't have an expanse that don't happen from the center outward. Meaning if I drop a grenade, all of the energy going to equally surround a point of singularity. Meaning the point where I throw that grenade at. Just like if I throw a fucking seed in the ground, that tree will grow around a point of singularity. And guess what will happen, y'all? Watch this. It'll give me tree rings. Now, guess what? That seed is a bomb, just like a grenade. Because check it out. When I throw that seed in the ground, it's energy going to explode into a, a tree pattern. And so it's th this little circle that's in the middle of these tree rings, that represent the point where the gardener actually planted the seed at. Ain't that motherfucking deep, y'all? Mm -hmm. Hell this, yeah, my nigga. This, so, so when you go back to the middle of the earth, you go into the seed of creation. You're going to the, the fucking... See, when the seed is planted in the ground, the gardener got to break a fucking hole in the ground. The hole that was broke in the ground to plant you in this underworld is your crown chakra. That, that's an opening in the heavens. That, that, that's like a plant, right? 
just say I make a hole in the ground and put a seed in it. When I cover that hole, the seed going to pop out that same location with the hole that I made. Think about this now. I dug a hole, but I covered it back up. But guess what, though? The seed that I covered up, it's going to pop back out the exact same spot where I dug that hole at. So it's mark, X marks the spot. What spot? The spot where I dug the hole at to plant the seed at. So there's a spot, there's a hole in the sky called a star. And that's the hole that this gardener dug called a creator to plant you in this simulation. Let me say that again. There's a star in the sky for every human, just like there was a hole dug for every seed to enter the underworld. You're going to pop back up in that same location as a tree, not a seed. And if they think that is spookism, just go to a body of water, a lake or something, and get a rock and throw it in the water. Right where that rock hit, that's the center. And then you're going to see the energy spread out. That's the ripple. A ripple, if life is a ripple effect, exactly. And where the rock hit the water at, showing me where the seed was dropped in the ground at to grow this tree. See, now that we see, right, what we see these tree rings doing just like the water do when we drop a rock in it. Life is a ripple effect. Yes. Every fucking thing core relate to what you're saying, my nigga. Everything, all of this. This is this is technology, all of it. This is also a correction, a correction to you pan-African niggas, you know? So keep going, my nigga. I want to talk to you too, though, bro. But keep going, my nigga. I'm saying they don't care if you say, well, life started in Africa. Life started in America. Life started at the center of the earth, and I got proof that you can't argue with. And guess what? They don't try to argue with it. They say, ain't you going to debate Mactoon about the shape of the earth? Fuck y'all, Freemasons. I'm deeper than proving a nigga that the ground he walking on flat with his stupid ass. And y'all stupid ass too, nigga. I'm over this bitch talking about this spanning universe, the Big Bang, in a way that you can't motherfucking refute. And you trying to get me off the deep shit to prove to this white boy that how a fucking level work, how a periscope work. I'm not going to stay dumb with you niggas. If he don't know the earth flat, fuck him. I'm scared and I'm running from him. He want to debate. Not gonna make you losers no money, nigga. I'm the shit right now. I took uh, over. The, I took over the conscious community, nigga. That's the old yeah, country. Now, now let me pop my shit, please. Please let me pop my shit. Listen, that's the old conscious community over there that niggas dealing with. And if you still fucking with the old conscious community and not the baby, just remember that shit over there walking on the cane. That shit got a shit bag. That shit right there about to expire in a few more years and wrinkle up and die. Get, hey man, leave that old shit alone. After the eclipse, everything was renewed, nigga. I'm the rebirth of the conscious community. Can't y'all see that shit, nigga? This is the real grassroots non boule community. And those that really came to this community to seek some knowledge that they can apply to their own soul, they gonna fuck with me. They ain't gonna fuck with the niggas that got all them pastors and priests over there debating about which goddamn sky daddy is real. Them niggas can't fuck with my dirty draws and they know it, nigga. I came in this bitch and took over. Look at what I built, nigga, in five years. I got a quarter million motherfuckers following me. Sarnetta and all them niggas been on this bitch for over a decade, nigga. I've been here in half the time and I'm bigger than them niggas and I control the narrative, nigga. I got them over there talking about Yahweh right now, nigga, because they saw me talking about it, nigga. I got them over there thinking about me thinking about flat earth and I'm not stunned them niggas. I'm stunned my people and teaching my people this knowledge I got. I'm on them niggas mind and they ain't on my mind. I know I'm the shit nigga. I know what I'm doing to them niggas. I'm killing them niggas softly because I'm winning and I'm eating and they dying slow and I'm rubbing it in nigga and ain't no other thing and I'm gonna show you what's gonna really make it rub in when I ignore them niggas like Dane Calloway doing. <laughs> Yo, when I get so bougie 
that I ain't even talking about you niggas, but y'all talking about me. Shout out to Dane for that. I got to give him props on that. Them niggas be on his head and they can't get a response out of him for nothing. He won't even mention them niggas. That's discipline. Shout out to Dane, nigga. I'm learning that from you, nigga. Big real shout outs to you too, bro. Hey, hold on. Let me just get it for one minute real quick, boy. Uh, that's, that's the shit I wanted to hear, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? And, bro, I put a link in the back because McToon went live yesterday, but I want to show you Nepal's profile picture, which she's had now for a month, which is just Yahweh. You know what I'm you saying? You know why? Because let me tell you how much of a uh, Satan-ass nigga that uh, Sarnetta is. Sarnetta saw my title. He saw it was $45. He saw that I'm growing. And he said, man, that young black man about to make a lot of money. And I got to do something to throw him off because he just came out with a documentary that's going to make him a lot of money. And it's actually worth every penny, giving the people something valuable. Just a bunch of damn niggas who believe in sky daddies arguing with each other. Worth every so look, fucking penny. When Sarnetta saw me doing this, I know how Masons think. Masons will see you busy because guess what I'm going to tell y'all real quick. If you're a bright-minded motherfucker like I am, you don't need to make money by getting niggas divided and debating with niggas all day like Sarnetta. I make more money than Sarnetta selling my own solo documentaries. And he know, he know I know that because I ate with you before, nigga. And I saw how many people purchased your tickets, nigga. And you over there count my numbers and you know I'm winning, son. Without you, I don't need you. All them other niggas need Sarnetta. And they need him to set them up a debate and then he gonna spoon feed them niggas a little lousy, a little salary. Nigga, I let Sarnetta pay me before. I can make way fucking much more money by myself, nigga, if I just ignore them niggas. My, I, guess what I found out about my people, nigga? I can go over there debate in the HOK and my people gonna... They ain't gonna really show up like that because they don't really rock with Sarnetta and they feel like they put money in his pocket even though they love me. Now, I will get a couple of people to show up enough for Sarnetta to want to keep booking me for a debate, right? But my thing is this. If you don't genuinely fuck with me and my people, I don't want them monet giving you their money and energy. I can stay over here with my people and we can do what we doing because this is a good community, nigga. And we can do fine without debates. We ain't thirsty for debates. That was the old days. It had its time. And now we just feel like y'all trying to fucking uh, 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 distract and play on us, my nigga. Because soon as I come out with this shit, he with them Hebrews right now trying to get me to debate this white boy on flat earth, but they got in the pot them talking about Yahweh. So you trying to intercept my motherfucking idea and throw yeah. me off my square when I post to be promoting my presentation and teaching about Yahweh and you want me to come make you some money by debating Mac Toon about flat earth because you flat. see me making money with my shit right now. Sarnetta devil, he don't like to see a young black man make it. He's an old gate guard. My motherfucking, hey, bro, like, I just want you to see her profile picture, though, you know, on that on that link I sent you. Because, you know, they was going crazy, but I don't even care about none of that I shit. I saw that shit, saying. though. I, I watched saw, it. I saw, listen, but you know bro, what I love, bro, bro? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Look, wait, wait, wait. I know you a real one, though, but I'm going to tell you, I know you a real one, because guess what? I saw the profile picture, and I'm going to tell you something, Waking in my eyes. That shit had me fucking hot, bro. I was pissed off, bro. Me too, bro, nigga. And I'm going to tell you something, nigga. I said, I know they trying to lure me in. I'm going to ignore it and just keep doing my thing because I, I got this damn documentary out and I need to be doing my teaching and promoting it and letting people know why they should get it and why these niggas is hating on it because they see with this thumbnail that, okay, this nigga ain't playing. And guess what? I saw that thumbnail. They got the same picture I got with Yahweh. Hey, yo, Sanchez. Hey, hold on, bro. Hey, yo, Sanchez. Oh, bro, forget all that. 
They, they I'm just you. saying, oh, oh bro. Oh, 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 I come oh, oh. out with my shit and I use this thumbnail, and now you come out and now you got Yahweh on the brain like that. That's fucked up, bro. But see, I had to calm down and said, look, if I go live, I'm gonna be too hot. I see what niggas trying to do, bro. I'm learning to calm down and just stay on my square. Yeah, man. And, 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 you know, I told you. Hold on, real quick. Just let me chop it up for a minute, y'all. Just let me chop it up for just a minute, my nigga, and I will give it right back to y'all. Y'all know I've been muted, but bro, man, I said that shit to you earlier. You know, like just the way they came over here and this nigga. Come on, my nigga, you, the truth you bringing is way bigger than all of this shit. And that Yahweh, ooh, that's stepping on. Ooh, you already know. You know, I purchased the documentary. You know what I'm saying? I, I'll and, and listen, it. I and listen, and you. awakening. You know that why the Masons hate me, the Hebrews hate me, the Moors hate me, NASA hate me. Like I told you, flat power ain't nobody ally, nigga. Everybody's an enemy is, I told you, EBK. You can't be down with this group if you ain't no diehard uh, cut. Like, you got to really be about that shit. Because we ain't got no allies, nigga. Like they said about black people. Nigga, we ain't really, we the real ones with no allies. All we got is the spirit of the ancestors. But that's all we need with the truth, nigga. Facts, bro. Man, you, know, you know what? I, you know what? Damn, damn, let me just chop it up with this one minute. Ago. I'll get it right back. You know, it's no, so it's much, like a five second so thing. This is a five Come second thing. Eat it, Silas. Go ahead. Sanchez, Sanchez. What you need to do is is take that bait, go uh uh go over there, uh, do what you have, do whatever you need to do, debate them, whatever the case may be. Nigga, just, no, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, stop that, wait, stop. Wait, no, wait, wait, no, wait, you wait, said five seconds, man. Hold on, hold on, man. I, I thought you just was about to drop some. Hold on, real quick. We can't tell. Hold on, hold on, Silas. We can't tell bro Sanchez what he need to do, first of all. So bro. let's just cut that out. Hold bro, on. Why are you God. cutting me God. off to Silas. tell me that? Silas. I just want five you, seconds you, you to cut say me off to say that. Me. Hold on, my nigga. Hold on. Hey, fuck, fuck, you. Fuck, fuck it. Fuck it. All I need is ten seconds. Stop arguing, please. Yeah, one well, mic. Hold on, Silas. I thought you was going somewhere, but bro, like can't, we can't tell you what to do, my nigga. But if anything, nigga, you can goddamn battle fucking McToon and put him in his place on Mother Day debate. Shit that'll benefit your message. Then you can go up there over there and whoop her ass on Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? If that's what you want to do. But don't get off that Yahweh shit, my nigga. I watched that shit today, bro. Bro, that shit was great, my nigga. You took your fucking time. The collages was fire, nigga. And guess what, bro? You had you had some chick on there doing the moderating as well. You know what I'm saying? Like splitting the time with you. Nigga, that shit flows so good, my nigga. I don't know who she is, but my nigga, when she was saying the shit she was saying, my nigga, I felt that shit too, bro, along with the collage. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to chop it up with you, though, my nigga, but great, great fucking documentary. And that shit means more than any fucking debate right now. Don't let up on that fucking Yahweh shit. And when you brought up curious, curious, <coughs> chaos, you can pull that up. The Greek meaning of Yahweh, you know, curious, you know, when we, we, we stop using our fucking mind, you know what I'm saying? And start going to these fucking personalities that they gave to us, curious, you know, and, and we can now it's chaos. But my nigga, well done, my nigga, on your fucking documentary. That's this what the fuck I wanted to say, Silas. Kudos to that. I just needed five seconds just to tell Bro Sanchez what he needed to do with them debating him is reverse engineer that shit and have them motherfuckers buy his documentary straight off of curiosity. <coughs> That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, that's a good idea. Bro, he got them, yo, you got them motherfuckers cut where they can't even they can't even stitch that shit up, bro. The motherfuckers had a chance, excuse my friends, they had a chance to, to come over here to the truth and they try to see if they can play you or, or push you to the side or make you look crazy because they try to make you look crazy just like they try to do Tesla, right? I peeped all that shit. That's why I don't fuck with none of them niggas, man. Q Butter, I don't fuck with none of them niggas. They some lames. And then when they people wake up and realize you telling the truth over here, 
just like just like when I when I first started listening to you, I had to figure out a name. Like I really wasn't on the internet like that. But after after I listened to you for like maybe a year and a half or two, that's when I became real true. And, and you know why I love this shit, bro. Everybody yeah. gang up on the flat earthers, but everybody scared of us, nigga. We like we like it's, it's gangs in Cali like that. I hate to always use the gang example, but <clears throat> it's gangs right. in Cali that it's so many gangs got to be allies to go against them niggas. That's us, nigga. <laughs> hey, so chance. You don't realize with this, this with this hey. knowledge, nigga. Real talk. You don't realize this. I got we, a business, right? I got a business. I ride around with my number. I'm gonna say this real quick. I ride around with my number on my shit, nigga. I've been blackball where I live at. Yo, I, I've always been teaching and flat earth and, you know, saying all that stuff and, and everything I've been learning. Boy, they don't like that shit. You know, I'm in the South. I love, I bro, and, and, bro, I love this shit. I love to be the squad. Don't nobody like we ain't got no allies and bitch will beat you up. Bitch, you don't want to get in the ring with us either, nigga. Yeah, uh -uh. nigga. Right. Leave us it's over good. here, nigga. Right. We, it, right. Because we you don't don't play with that. Right. That's, I love it, nigga. And long as they know that, because check it out. And I'm going to tell y'all how you pull them niggas car up with this flat power shit on some banging shit. Guess what you tell them niggas? And you ain't connected to the ancestors, nigga. Ooh. Mm. And you mm. niggas ain't connected to nothing ancient. You can get that shit out your mouth, nigga. Soon as them mm. niggas go to talking some ancient shit, you get offended, nigga, because we got the ancient cosmology. What you talking about, imposter? Like you that's how we you. that's how we banging on niggas with the ancestor shit, nigga. Right. Hey, bro. You can tell they fake you can tell they fake because they cling on to the fake shit, which is all the physical shit, all the low vibration shit. Hey, Sanchez, you, you got you you uh you got me when I say reverse engineer that bait and shit, right? Because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real with you. Um, I, I don't necessarily want you to go over to NWA or do, and do a debate or anything like that. But ooh, bro, if you were just to go over there and taunt them niggas on Yahweh in front of all they people, and then talk about you got a documentary uh, revealing the truth about it, nigga, you gonna have a whole bunch of them niggas be like, what the? Hold up. What do they know that I don't know? Silence. You don't know, you don't know the games they be playing. They be trying to shut them up, man. They be trying to hey, silence let, 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 let me show you, bro. You know what I found out, bro? When I got with this ancestral cosmology, that it's a lot of people got a monopoly on the word ancient. But guess what I found out, though? They didn't want putting cosmology behind it. So if you want to think I'm lying... If you go to Google now and put in ancient cosmology, I'm going to pop up in the top 10 shit. And I, that's, just, that's a chess move. Because guess what? They got ancient aliens, ancient pyramids, ancient Anunnaki. They got all this shit that they monopolize. If you type that in, the agent's going to pop up. But when you type in ancient cosmology, flat motherfucking power. They didn't want nobody to go and see the ancestors cosmology. They thought people would type in flat earth. I was the only flat earther that was going on the flat earth and ancient cosmology. Pete Gain, if you go look at other flat earth channels, you will never see those two words, ancient cosmology. It'll be flat earth, flat earth, flat earth, flat earth. They didn't understand what I was doing. Ancient cosmology is the study of the ancient conception of the universe. Flat Earth is me proving you, to you that the ground we walk on don't curve. That's two different things. If you don't do them both, you ain't serving the ancestors. You just arguing with dummies. Right. That's when so, I bring up ancient cosmology to people. They be lost. They be trying to have an intelligent conversation and they be like, so well, what do you believe in? I'm like, it ain't something that I believe in. They be like, so what do you be studying? I said, well, I found somebody that studied ancient cosmology. He introduced me to ancient cosmology. They be like, what is that? I'm like, yo, you got four degrees. <laughs> All these degrees that don't know. Hey, hey know, let, let me show them that. some real quick, real true. This is Good. ancient cosmology right here. Now, a person may say, Sanchez, that ain't got nothing to do with flat earth. Yes, it do, because the, yeah. ancient, because the ancient cosmologists said that we live in a simulation. 
that we projecting from our own mind. So this is the graduation part of Flat Earth where you start realizing it's a real matrix and you're creating it in a dream state like Neo was. See, a lot of the Flat Earth is still arguing with dummies. We argue with the dumbest from time to time, but we walk and chew bubble gum and flat power. We work harder. We go the extra mile. So as well as beating up on globe heads, what distinguish our group is that we are heavily involved into the ancestral symbolism, which is why we get props from Brother Panic. We get props for a lot of real ones, nigga. I knew what I was doing when I was building this shit, which is why I said flat power to still go with like the black power shit. Why? Because I was infiltrating the whole black conscious community using the nut and gab. Using the goddamn black people was telling you the earth was flat before you had NASA. That's how I was able to get a lot of black people from Sarnetta. Man, them niggas hate me because I outsmarted the Boule. I outsmarted the Masons. I went to them niggas shit. They tried to blackball me and the real ones followed me back over here, nigga. I wouldn't have a following. I ain't, I, I'd have no shame in saying I infiltrated, nigga, because the Boule <laughs> infiltrated, nigga. And the exactly. boule, and right, so I c created a community where we can still have the old conscious community that I used to like, where you can think outside the box. Niggas like Bobby Hemet, Delbert Blair, the real ones, nigga, Sebi and all that, and y'all can have them goddamn washed up pastors and Hebrews and niggas believing in sky daddies, nigga. Okay. I, don't, I don't come from that community. That's the boule shit, nigga. I come from the Steve Coakley and all that shit, nigga. Hey, bro, Sanchez, I got a oh. question for you, Jen, in indulging with cosmology, man. Um, because, like, I really like, like, I love cosmology and, the and what you've done with it, bro. It's it's, it's beyond genius, honestly. <clears throat> but, so, like, what's the polarity to cosmology in the sense of, like, if there was a polarity to biology, it would be astrology with the neutral point being geology type shit. Astrology. Oh, uh, uh, you astrology. Gotta, okay, go ahead, rabbit man. And then you. Yeah, Hi, Hi, panel. Hi, everyone. I've done a lot of marketing for you again today. I woke up early and you were straight on. Uh, I hope everyone is fine. I hope every, everyone's doing good. Yeah, we're good. You have to man. All stay positive. You all have to stay positive. I know I speak very fast because I speak so many different languages. Okay, that's why you have trouble with my accents. Okay, listen, I love you all. And listen, do what you're doing. I respected you the day that you say you're a god. That's the main thing that people have to put in their minds. I've been following you for donkey years. I can't even remember when I started following you. But I respected you even more when you said you were a god. Because we are all gods having a human experience. The dog is having a dog experience. The bee is having a bee experience. And all this uh, stonemasons you were talking about earlier, I was trying to put that through. It was started by Buddha and King Ashoka. Then the Freemasons stole it from the stonemasons. Can I ask That's you something? That's why some... I told you once before. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you some. Who were the people that came and created the fiat government, but they were they had a carpenter God, Christ. They were woodworkers, not stone workers. Because Exactly. Yeah. You see, they've lied about everything. Go ahead. Yeah. They've lied about everything. You see, uh, the, uh, Buddha was a Hindu avatar. He went up to uh, King Ashoka, a king in the in the times before India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, and he started the stonemasons. That's why I said the the second coming has already happened. The Krishna, you know, that, the Kaiki so, avatar. But you know what's crazy about all this shit, bro? Like they literally told us that because. Jesus being a carpenter should have showed us this new religion under Christ is a knockoff of an old ancient spiritual exactly. system. And that this you carpenter, yeah, and he, 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 he couldn't, he didn't even know, he wasn't even a stonework. Jesus wasn't a mason. He was the fake Jew. And then were the woodworkers that created the shabby shacks. Yep. I put that in the chat Man, it's fucking crazy. Look, the abos, they, they the abos won't tell you this. The Pan Africans won't tell you this. That's why I've been saying them two groups working they together, bro. Opposition. Yes, they are controlled opposition. I yes, come Rabbit from a family man. on both sides. 
Listen to me very carefully. I've been studying studying them for the past 50 years. I'm 54. I'm going to be 55 next birthday in February 21st. Listen to what I'm saying. From the age of five, I've been studying. 13 uncles and aunties on my dad's side, 13 on my mum's side. Only my mum and dad were not Boulay and Freemasons. My granddads, everyone, all their uncles, everybody, the whole, the whole like, um, uh, mushrooming of it, they're all Boulay in one way or another. They're Freemasons. You know, they've all been indoctrinated into it. So they're getting the real truth. We are not getting the real truth at state level, at school level. We're getting nothing. Hey, bro, Sanchez. Hey, bro, Sanchez, can you acknowledge my question for a second, bro? I, I, hey, I'm, I'm... shout out the big dog, Philly, OG. Shout he, out. He, he know why he's a real one. That's the OG. He know why, why I did it. Yeah, go ahead. Hey. Hey, can you acknowledge my question for a second? Hey, and shout out to my sister Katrina. Miss Mocha, I see you. Jewel, I see you. Hey, my bad. I'm 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 in the chat. I mean, I just peeped at the chat. My bad, Sal. Let's go ahead, man. My bad. My bad, brother. <laughs> I'm tripping. Yeah, you got it. Um, yeah, I was just asking, um, what where in in the sense of like uh cosmology, um, cause so like when we're talking about so above, so below, so within, so without, so micro, so macro type thing, like uh, it's a representation of like at, uh, astrology, biology, geology, and the other ologies that are the studies of the so above, so below, so within, so without. Where does cosmology fit into that? Uh, is the is it its own like uh, earlier, astrology? Astronomy. Astrology. It's, it's, it's tied into your soul. What what this whole he, he, soldier? He, the astronomy, astrology, right? Both of those. Because check it out, right? Astrology. Well, okay then. Okay, now we gotta go into it deep because you got the fake motherfuckers too, right, Salads? You got these astrologers that tell you, <laughs> don't you date that woman, and don't you do you know that that's the fucking shallow Cleo the psychic astrology. You know, but the real astrology is how we affect the heavens and how the heavens affect us. We manifest how, everything from the inside out. Right. You see, that's when you get to that level, that old astrology of where this star affected me. I cheated on that nigga because it was Mercury retrograde. That's what your woman to say. Right. It was a full moon. So I slapped that nigga. Now, how are you a God if the stars controlling you, but God control, you right? God control the stars, right, rabbit man? So the yeah, people exactly. that's- we the people control everything, right. we manifest everything. We manifest yeah. everything, everything you can imagine, we manifest. That's why we are gods. Even the dog manifests stuff. Even the cat manifests stuff. Everyone manifests. So that's what I was saying is levels to this shit, and you reach a level where- where I'm trying astrology, to explain to you in yeah, simple terms. You. Right? For 50 years, I've been studying this. Okay? I'm trying to put you into some of my knowledge. When I was uh, 12, 13, I stood up to all the teachers. I was the favorite child, not just at, in the family, but at school as well, even though I was not Brule. All the Brule loved me because I had something about me. You know, there was something about me. I still know there's something about me now. Because I'm genuine, I, Yo, I'm honest. I'm, I'm, I'm tripping that y'all even know about the Brule in your culture. No offense, bro. I'm saying, uh, Rabbit Man, y'all got boule too, yo? <laughs> That's crazy, man. Marikas is full of boule. You know, <laughs> I was born in England, but I spent the, my time from the age of five to the age of 14 in Mauritius. So it's Mauritius is a cesspit of boule. So they probably have different words of what they call it under no, the same they call, it they call it boule and Freemasons. Same yeah, thing. Yeah, but I'm saying it'll be a different thing. I'm saying it'll be in a different tongue word. You get what I'm saying? We speak French. We speak French and English over there. English is our so main we language. We were ruled by the French before the English. So we that's, what I'm saying. that's what I'm saying, Reverend, man. Y'all might call it something different. It's a different word than what we might use in English because we mostly speak English. So you might say a we word that... Our what's, language? The, what's, the word, what's the word in your language for boule? Boule. Everywhere in the world? It ain't no other yeah. word for it? Yeah, they know Boule. Everyone knows Boule, the Moors, and all the other secret yeah. society. The main one is the Clown Society and the Seraphim Society. That's the one you need to research upon, bro, Sanchez. The Seraphim and the Clowns. Yeah. 
Hey, bro, you're you're trying. Uh, the dude about who's asking about the language. Yeah, I think you're asking about transliterations, right? No, I was just asking them. Did they say it in a different word? No, I mean, no, no, no. Too late. He you said know, own, own secret societies for the ladies, Eastern star. It's worldwide. It's all Freemason. It's all controlled by the Catholic Church and the Jews mm -hmm. and the Kazarian fake Jews. Mm. Let me ask you a question. So, yep. uh, so listen, the, the, the Pope, is he controlled by the Jews or is it vice versa, the Jews controlled by the Pope? You see, there are higher levels than the Vatican. You know, there are the controllers that you don't even know the names of. Gotcha. The Faranasis. You know, Iran, most of these uh, power brokers, they live in Iran. They're all Persian. Hey, but listen, mm. I'm going to be fair. That's why they get to hate Iran, because they live there. Yeah, I've been teaching that everybody got their own form of the boule. So, yeah, I don't know why I asked that. But let me... Let me say this, though, real quick, man. Um, yeah. You know, this whole Yahweh shit, though, it is deeper than just, you know, it, it's because, it's check it out, in right? Your DNA. You see, the yeah, Yahweh the numbers the, the in your thing, DNA. The you thing, know your right, the thing that I want to show them is, like, Yahweh was never some person in the sky. It was the mind... Because the reason they personified the mind into a person, because the mind... So you don't pray yourself, you pray an out, outside entity. You don't it, go it, within, and, you go without. But the whole thing is like, if we don't know that it's a personification, we will go without. But if we know it's a personification, we'll go within, which is what, that creates my whole job, where can I, I, can I, can I do... Can I simplify your job, bro Sanchez? Well, hold on real quick, real quick. Yeah, you can, but hold on real second. My yes, thing, my, my thing is that my job is to go back behind the occult and undo everything they did. Because that's what they, I've been trying to do they, for 50 years. This is why I'm, I'm giving you an idea that you got you got to Okay, go ahead. You know, my gonna, YouTube okay, yeah, let, let's hear it. Go ahead, go ahead. My YouTube channel has been cancelled, you know, in 2019. So listen to what I'm trying to say to you. If you try and push forward, because what I'm trying to say to you in your own words, you can use your own your own style, because you've got a special own style, and don't lose that. Don't try and fall into the narrative of you have to all be the same. You have a, uh, you have a unique uh, uh, style. Keep that. You see, that's what Hinduism is. It's not a religion. It's a way of life. Anything can be good. You can formulate a clay thing. You can take. You can. You know. You personify it in your own way. And that is more powerful than all the gods in the world. Because it's your own personal god. You have more power than you even realize. They yeah. haven't given you a manual how your body works, how your mind so, works, how your spirit works. So, how about your body? So field? hold on a you second, know, rapid man. Around. I know you crunk, but I got to mute you for a second to get back to what I was saying. Hold on. <laughs> real quick, real quick. We're going to pass it back because I've been a forgot. And I thought you was going to uh, go somewhere. I thought you was going to go. But let me say this real quick. Because this is import real important to why I got this up, what I was saying. what When I was saying, Rabbit Man, that I got to undo everything that they did, what I was saying was they the wor the conquest era, when they went around the world colonizing people, they went around the world after they would defeat you in combat. They would start to make you worship these personifications as literal beings that exist in the heaven and shit. Now, over exactly. time, over time, though, guess what, though? They literally created an artificial intelligence on Earth, a satellite system or this lesser god, Yaldabo, that literally exists. Yeah. He exists yeah, around yeah. the exosphere. So what what I just want to say this. No, no interruptions. Hold on. The concept, this is what I'm saying. Is that deception is a art it's a science and the first deceivers use primitive measures and they mastered the art of deception into technological forms like media mind programming mk ultra it's even deeper now my whole thing was religion was the first technology of mind control and what is religion religion is simply the system of turning ancient spirituality and concepts 
into modern belief systems. Now, why do people believe in these gods? Because they don't know that these gods is only personifying the part of them that they don't got to believe in that is the soul. Think about it, right? So our soul is eternal. Our soul is omniscient, meaning it can be anywhere it want to be. And if you want to prove that, close your eyes right now and let's go to Jamaica. Damn, look at you in Jamaica. Fuck that. Now let's go to Siberia. See, when you realize that your body need to get on a plane to go to Jamaica, but your mind don't because your mind can bring Jamaica to it. You know why? Your mind is the creator of the universe. So if your mind is where conception take place and the universe was conceived, you're projecting this world around you. If you were in your own dream right now and you became lucid and you were in Florida and I told you, let's go to Canada, would you get on a bus in your dream? No, I'll just thank myself into Canada and I'll be there. It's my dream. Who? So you in your own dream, you lucid and you taking an airplane? Why you ain't taking the starship? That's what I'm trying to teach people. This part of us is separate from the body. It can detach from the body. We forgot that. Elon Musk remembered that, which is why he got Neuralink. He know that this, this is the detachable. So my thing is this, man. I'll uh, end right here. What I'll say is, and this ain't to toot my own horn, it ain't a lot of people doing what I'm doing, how I'm doing it which is getting rid of the spookism and graven images no one and, knows and, and they make and making it about you, your soul, how you get to the earth and how you going to leave it. I'll end right there. You see your it's a festival festival happening in you, then you manifest afterwards. It happens inside of you and it can happen instantly. There's people there's some people who can go to Sabri and the cognate and don't even feel cold. Mind or matter, that really is what it is, mind over matter. And I, I yield the floor. Who else we got on the call? Salute to everybody, man. Let's keep the mic One passing love. around, man. One love. Hey, so, so Sanchez, without getting too deep, uh, you oh, know. Well, I don't know how to not get too deep, but let's see what we, what, oh, what, when what, I what, say what, not too deep, I'm talking about your, uh, your Yahweh um, uh, documentary. I don't want to get too, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just, I don't, I don't just, wanna... just ask me whatever you ask me and get what you get. Uh, Go ahead. Right. Um, so, like, ultimately, Yahweh is just a um, a virus or a, a, a an anti-program inside of the simulation, more or less, right? Okay, so check this out, right? Yahweh is the seat of the soul. And Yaldabo, if the demiurge, this lesser God, see, here's the thing. Yahweh is them reverse engineering what the seat of the soul is. But the seat of the soul is the real deal, and Yahweh is the Antichrist. That's why I got both of them next to each other. What you call in the Christ and the Antichrist is basically the God and the guide. Okay, the God is the Antichrist. It's the false leader. The guide is the real Christ on my on the right of this collage, which is showing you the mind over matter. They turned that into God over the earth. But the thing is this right here. You can't control your body and your reality if you can't control your mind. And because they don't want you to have control over your mind, because they're the government, they want to govern your mind, right? And you both can't do it. So they give you a God and take your guide away. And now you look for the God to lead you. And when you look for the God, I just want to finish. And when you look for the God to lead you, since they created the God, they can make the God tell you to go wherever they want you to go and they can speak through to God to get you to fulfill whatever they want you to fulfill that is very simple magic it ain't That's even it. magic for real it's, 
You feel me, rapping man? Like I wouldn't even so, call that magic. Yeah. So it's like so what we're seeing on the screen, right? And just utilizing these references is we're seeing a reality and an actuality play play its part in the simulation. I don't I don't want to comment. I'm gonna I'm gonna just drop the mic on what I said. The people that understood what I said, they're gonna get it. And the people that ain't, they ain't. But salute the silence oh. and everybody. Else. It's just a veil over here. He's saying he's saying that Yahweh is the hijack of our natural reality, our way of thinking, and all that other stuff. That's What's what your I agree. Low key, low key, I'm about to spend this forty five dollars on this uh on this documentary. Low key, and you know, my, my my whole thing with this whole documentary was. It was a grueling process. Um, it took me a week of just waking up and going to sleep, growing a beard, editing video. I don't want to look at an editing program for at least a month. And I'm never going to make a five-hour joint like this. I'm going to keep it to like a two, three-hour joint that's going to be like 25 bucks because this beat my ass. It really did. Man, matter of fact, if you think that I'm playing, let me see some real quick. Um, you know what I'm gonna do for y'all? I'm glad y'all made me think of this. This is what I'm about to do, right? Check this out. For the people that's skeptical on buying it or whatever, you know why? I don't blame you, cause guess what? I didn't really show you nothing. Let me let me do something for y'all. Stand by real quick. This is what I'm gonna do real quick. Let the program. I'm finna open up the entire project right now. No cap. About to open up the entire Yahweh project. It's oh, it's loading right now. It's a five hour project. It's gonna take it a minute. And they don't so, get the value of it. Ain't just them looking at it themselves, man. Y'all could take this, man, and you could teach your next generations, man. Like this is real. criteria that you can't find nowhere else in the world. So you better get it, evaluate it, keep it. So you can always have it. That's why I thought Killer Priest would be so down with it, man. It's just incredible. Let, let me let me let me uh put it up for the people out there. Uh, and shout out to the brother who oh uh, I'm you know what? I'm on a fuck with uh Killer Priest because I see that there's a brother that from the community that really want me to reach out to him. I'm gonna do that, man. I'm gonna do that. So hold on a second though. Let me Pull hey, Sanchez, when you get a second, can I ask you a question? Yeah, when I get a second for sure. Can y'all see so. the program I got up? Yep. Hey, I just want to show something real quick, man. <clears throat> this is a five-hour. Now, keep this in mind, right, what I'm about to show you, right? It's people that make um 10-minute videos, right, online. And guess how long, right? Guess how long it take them to edit a 10-minute video, right? Just a 10-minute video. It take them a day. And a 20, 30-minute video, two days, because it's a lot of chopping and editing that go along with it that you wouldn't know if you don't really do it at this level. So this shit took me a week. And, and that week, I lost a lot of sleep. When I came to my conclusion on the price, this program alone, I play a, pay a monthly fee for. And it's a whole other separate program that you use just to record on. It's a lot going to this shit. So let's go into the project, right? Because what's happening now, you're looking at the project zoomed out. But... Remember, if I move this stick from right here to right here, guess what just happened? A whole 20 minutes. This little gap is 20 minutes. <laughs> so for, remember what I told you earlier, though? A person making a 10-minute video, they doing it in a day. When I make my documentaries, I get on my Air Force security shit. Guess what I do? From sun up to sun down, taking caffeine, drinking coffee, taking breaks, walking outside, coming back right on it. 
I ain't doing nothing else but working on this shit, and it's a real discipline. Look now, I ain't moved a blue line, nothing but a little bit, and that's 20 minutes. Watch this. Watch this. That go an hour right there. We ain't even nowhere near here. And look at the collage that you see. You don't see the collages. Let me do something real quick. Hold on, because I want y'all to see the image. Hold on. Now y'all see it. You see what I'm saying? When I move this shit just a little bit, watch this. Boom, whole nother picture. Every time the shit change up, I got to go in there and edit that shit. Let's zoom in to show you what's happening because you don't see what's happening. This is a lot of meticulous work and your computer be slow because it's so many. All that pink stuff, those are images. These collages are made while I'm teaching. Because when I say something, I may say, that was a guy named Yahweh that uh, some some about you. Guess what I got to do? do? I got to pause this shit, go and add shoe into the collage. Because I take a picture of shoe, I scale it down, and I throw it up there in the grid, and you'll see them changing throughout the show like that. If I say something, I show it. And I'm saying a lot of different shit, which means I got to keep stopping and going to get a picture for that, stacking that on that, stack that. Look at how many stacks this is to make this collage right here. You think that I'm just making that collage. No, I'm stacking. Look at like a song. Look at these, this stacked up like that. That meant I went at, like if I take one of these off, let me show you. Boom. Let's, let me show you something real quick. Hold on. Oh, unlock that. Watch this. Hold up. Let's do something. Let's do this. Hold on. It's freezing up. You know why? Because I got OBS open too. You know what? I might need to close this before it fuck my stream up. But you get the point. I ain't going to do too much. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just so much into it, man. Like, think about this. Look at how far we zoomed in. When I'm making this documentary, this is how close I'm zoomed in when I'm making it. Because I got to be able to cut this, cut that, cut right here. Look at right here, right, where it transitioned right here. It go to black and it come back in. I got, I'm the one doing that. I got to put that in there. Now, let's zoom out to show you how much of that I got to do so you can see. Look. Let's zoom out. Look at this. Anybody that make videos will say, boy, you a fool, nigga. That shit would have gave me a heart attack. Dude. Hey. Dude, do you know how much edited? Look at this shit is a fucking dude. Listen, let me show you how many layers of editing, though. The background music is down here. Then me on my camera recording. It's these blue chops. Look at how many chops that I did every chop because it was a gap. It was a mistake. Every chop you see, I had to put 10, 10 minutes, put some time to get that slot. Bro, damn. Then I had to find the right pictures above it. Look at how many tracks on this shit. Look at this shit, bro. I don't play with this shit. The time y'all didn't see me. Nigga, I was drinking hella coffee, smoking so many blunts, staying up from sun up to sun down, getting this thing ready. Bro, I know what what the fuck block. I, okay, I I listen, bro. That's what I'm saying. I know what the fuck this shit worth. Hey, and when you looking at that right there, you can tell like the, the earth is uh, is is holographic too. Look, that look like the whole city. That look like see all that. It's <laughs> crazy. That's this shit got so many aspects to it. So many breakdowns and shit. Like, man, like I even got how Chucky tied into Luke Skywalker, which is what I'm saying about the whole, like, it's just so much shit. I'll go into the javelin. Uh, man, it's, 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 it's to the point where I will watch my own shit back and forget that I went over that part. And that's how you get a bunch of diggers saying what I said because they know I cover so much shit that 
I can say it right on this nigga channel. And, and, and I, you know, I can wear the shirt that he let me borrow to the party. And I ain't going to tell the people that, you know, that's my shirt he got on. But see, when I'm in my dick mode, if you try to stunt with it too hard, like, yeah, I gave him that shirt. <laughs> I'm just bullshitting, nigga. Hey, Let hey, me quit. Sanchez. I'm drunk. That's funny. <laughs> hey, Sanchez, quick suggestion. You can you can throw you can push me down the stairs for uh, suggesting it, but why don't you? Since you got a five hour documentary there, what you, you about to say? Some shit that's about to piss me off. I feel it probably, right now. Probably, probably. <laughs> just go. I, 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 I'm, I'm being I can I'm being tell how this starting off, bro. Hey, and, if, listen. and listen, if you never made a five-hour documentary, boy, don't tell a nigga nothing who did. This shit got to, bro, it's so much work into this shit. Listen, put it this way, right? It's parts of this documentary where you will see a picture um, zooming in or zooming out, and it take me about two minutes for a picture that's only going to flash for 10 seconds. So it's so much intricate, tedious work with this shit. This is why I stop editing videos, bro. I'm getting old. It's really a lot of work. That's why when I do this shit, I got to be. It's so much to pay for the programs to do this with, right? And then the time, too. You really got to get some receipt. You got to be able to benefit some proceeds or what Crip Max say, some increments from this type shit, bro. That's why I ain't going to sell myself short because you have been a woe yourself down and be struggling around this bitch when you really the one dropping the jewels and the niggas with the lies balling out just because you selling yourself cheap. And that's why I said, like, yeah, I'm going to still teach this shit. But if you don't want to shop with me, shame on you. But yeah, you know. Hold on, hold on, Drew. Uh, the, re the reference I was going to say real fast was uh, you have a five hour documentary there. Why don't you grab an hour of a, what we consider a cliffhanger and just post it on your uh, on your wall. So people when people say, oh, man, he got the Yahweh up, go in there and watch it. You only get an hour of it. And now you, you you sitting on a on the edge of a cliff wanting to see the rest of it. That was just all my well, I did. I put it out in parts, right? If you get part one, you spend twenty five dollars, right? And um, you um, you um get just part one, and you say, okay, what? Well, and then my thing is this: I'm at a point now where I don't gotta give samples. See, when you go to Sam's Club, the the new companies that's coming up with new products, they tell Sam's Club because I used to work there. They'll say, look, take these. 50 boxes right here and give them out for free so the customers can buy our shit. But now check this. Guess what you will never get a sample of in Sam's Club? Cheez-Its, Kellogg's, Fruit Loops. You will never get a sample of uh, uh, A1 steak sauce. You know why? It's certain brands that you already know is already fire. So um, Cheez-Its ain't going to give out free Cheez-Its in, in Sam's Club. But a, some upcoming cracker company will say, give out some and let them taste it so they can buy it. If I'm Cheez-Its, I'm not doing that. I'm bougie, nigga. I got club crackers. You ain't got to taste my shit. I've been around for a while. My work is solidified. Like, Belvedere ain't giving out samples. I, 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 I'm beyond samples, and it ain't even ego no more. And I know my what my work worth because if... Thousands of people tuning in to my channels for 10 hours. That mean they really fucking with me, nigga. They want to hear what I got to say. And it just mean it's some I pay for it and some ain't. But sometimes I give samples. But I'm, I'm at a point now where that if I do, that's a luxury, nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because at this point, I've been around so long People know what I got to offer. You know when you see a collage, bro, I don't even got to tag my collages with Bro Sanchez TV or none of my brands because people know I'm the only one make this this my style. It's like when you hear Neptune's beat. Guess what? They don't got a big tag like uh, Young Wheezy and Metro Boomin because the beat is the tag, like a Timberland beat. You know how his shit sound. He ain't got to say, Timberland made it. 
You His beat is the tag. Don't nobody make beats like that. Don't nobody teach how I teach. Don't nobody make collages like this. If a nigga share this and say it's his, somebody tell him, nigga, you lying. That's Sanchez's, and I won't even have to tell him. This is my tag. I, I'm solidified. I'm stamped. That's Sanchez. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just this quick question. I'm going to be quick with it. You know, I've been following your work for a while. It's the first time I've been on your panel. But, you know, based on all your new Yahweh information, and I'm going to take it back, but um, I asked my girl and myself and my daughter, you know, in our dream, to if you ever get lucid, to ask anybody in that dream what year it was. And my girl finally, after about two months, she was lucid, and she asked her friend, and she said it was 02-20. Uh, 2050. So it's February 20th, 2050. And my question is this, if in that dream, is that an afterlife, a before life? Or is it a, just another uh, uh, another uh, uh, a life in a different nature? Like, I'm just trying to get a little understanding of that because it's kind of vague. We've been putting our heads together trying to figure it out. But I mean, what, what would dreams be in, in your words as far as time scales? Dreams, dreams are our projections out of this universe into many other universes throughout the multiverse. Okay. Now we can go deep with that. We can say, how do my consciousness know where to dream to? You each of these planets, and I take this from the late great Dr. Deborah Blair. Each of star in the sky is a classroom. <laughs> Each star in the sky is a classroom. Each star in the sky is a classroom. Everything that happens, happens for a reason. So everything you go through is to teach you a lesson that your soul had to learn from his life experience. And uh, every dream you have is an extension of that experience. And our mind don't distinguish between what we dream from what we live because life is but a dream. So everything you ever experienced in a dream, according to your mind, it's recorded as a memory, which is why you say, man, I remember this dream I had where I was doing this. I was doing who was doing it. I what you doing? Oh, where were you? And they were dream. It's no different than you saying, look. I remember that day we was on a porch at grandma's house. You talking about life. You said, I remember this dream I had where I, and you bring the, the same memories you create in life and reminisce about your mind do the same thing with the memories you create in a dream because you went there and experienced that. And that's an extension of your whole experience here. The dream world is an extension of this world and the ancestors knew that and that's why they was multi-dimensional. But um any questions, smoke or anything like that? Cause you know, yeah. I got oh, I'm, I'm got sorry, slushy. I was muted. No, 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 I'm sorry, I was muted. So yeah, I'm tracking with that and I follow with that. Like I said, I've been following work for a while, so all that's good. I want to go a little deeper. So let's say if you were in this dream, right, and you're talking to a friend of yours who you really don't speak to regularly no more, and then that friend gave you this information, right, and then you the next day you wake up, after that friend gave you that information, they reach out to you. So is it like your soul is the controller of your body? I get that. You go to sleep some, at dream, and you dream and you travel into other bodies you have. So with that being said, when you travel and you in your dream that you created in your own mind, is that friend of yours, like, that's one of their, like, auto bodies? Because the very next day, her friend called her and reached out to her, and it was just, like, real. It was like, man, I got chills. It was it was surreal. So, dude, she just not know that she talked to my girl in another universe in the dream and it's just like maybe it was like a call that got made like so, I'm just so trying to put that part l l yeah so here's the thing is very simple when you think about it right so there's another version of you in many alternate universes right now as i speak and they are literally carrying out a reality when you dream your consciousness project from this body to that version 
And when mm-hmm. you when you enter that version of yourself, you don't even know you dreaming. You just think this your life, man. This my life. I always been here. And then you just wake up and like, oh, that shit, that was a dream, you know, some kind of way. But if you never want to woke up, you would have stayed in a dream. Like, yeah, man, nobody could have told you you was dreaming. My point that I'm making is this. Consciousness is the observer. Your body is a vehicle, but if the driver ain't there, just think about this. We in a future world where they got self-driving cars. So when you get out your car and you ain't using it, it just drive itself around. Where does it go, Sanchez? It keep running the familiar routes. And so there's okay. a there's the dream for but let me go here. The dream version of you that's always there doing what it do. You can hop in that car, but it still it ain't parked when you ain't in it. It's moving when you ain't in it. It's carrying out a you know what I'm saying? So my thing is this just like you can jump in and out of these realities, other people can do it too. So let's say there's my cousin in a dream telling me something. And it feels so real. It's like I'm hearing this alternate reality. And I go and ask my cousin the next day, bro, did you dream that you was telling me something? Because I saw you in my dream. Guess what my, co- guess, guess what my cousin going to say? He going to say, nigga, I wasn't dreaming at all last night. What you talking about? And here's what's going on, right? This has to be a conscious decision that both of y'all make. And my brother, this is a lost art that the ancestors had where they both could project themselves into the same universe. So, again, think about a husband and wife going to sleep at night and they say, baby, where you want to go tonight? And the husband say, let's go to the Bahamas. They go to sleep. They both is on the beach at the Bahamas and they like, hey, baby, here you are. Here I am. This was the original Internet. You logged in. You online. Okay, because my body sleep. Now let's log off of this world and log into another world while this one charge up like me having a bunch of cell phones. When I can't use one when it's charging, I pick up the other one. We were multidimensional where we can let this, when this body get tired, we lay it down, charge it up. That don't mean life stop. It continued on in the internet, the original internet, the dream world. And mm. that, that were, that were, Uh, techniques we use to meet up in a dream world where I could tell my cousin, hey, man, all of you niggas need to go to sleep at this time tonight because we meeting up in, uh, you know, Madagascar in this universe. And we be like, all right, my nigga, I'll meet you there. We go to sleep, boom. Hey, where you at? We waiting on that nigga. You know it take him a minute to fall asleep. It take that nigga forever to fall asleep. Hold up. So, boom, mm-hmm. there he go. He pop up. Okay, nigga, let's vibe out. This was the original virtual reality game and shit. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, look, I appreciate the information. And, uh, man, you answered my question perfectly. But just the, um, man, the, you answered it perfectly. But the question, the one more question I had was, so just about the other person, like you said, your cousin. So, whether they remember or not, Let's say if they were still in this body, in the reality that we talking in right now, but they got like an inkling to reach out to you. That was just a weird thing to me. Like she hadn't talked to her in a while. And then after that dream, that very day, she reached out like randomly just just to speak to her. Do you think like maybe while you were in this body, even when you went to sleep and you wasn't aware of the dream, it was just something in your soul that like. Guess what happened? You ever dreamed about a person that wasn't in your life for a while, and then after the dream, you get a call from them or something? Yeah, or they, yeah, I or, have. But... Or, or, or they might mm-hmm. like your post, like, damn, I ain't heard from him in a while, and I just yeah, dreamed. Yeah, what is that? What is that? And, and, that's, and here's the thing. All of these realities are tethered together. And just because they just because they're alternate realities don't mean that what we doing in one don't echo into the next. So for everything that's happening in one of these universes, there's a counteraction happening for it in another universes. But that counteraction ain't too much different than what's happening in this universe is slightly altered. You see what I'm saying? All is connected. Hey, all so, is connected. I appreciate you, brother. I'm a mute up. Yeah. Hey, all your work, I love it, man. I'm a cop that Yahweh joint Demar, and uh, man, keep keep it up, brother.
Hey, I appreciate you, my brother Guru, for real. You, you, that was good questions, man. Pick my brain for Thanks, real. Brother. Salutes to all of y'all, man. This is what I, uh, you know, this is what I love to do, bro. Dive deep like this. Salutes to all of y'all, man. Uh, one thing that I went over yesterday was how our light of conception resembles the eclipse. And it's just stuff like that that I want to share with people that if you look around the Internet, you won't see this style of syncretism and without and not just to toot my horn it's just the fact that syncretism been around for a long time just like uh the nba but you will get these new players that come and reinvent the game like your allen iversons with the crossover your jordan's dunking from the free throw line your lebron's they'll they'll take the game to another level this is what sanchez did for the conscious community and all of the Masons hate me for it, just like the, the electricians and all of them hated Nikola Tesla in his time. We were rushing the advancement of humanity in certain areas and aspects of our reality. As for me, I'm lifting us forward, moving us forward, with opening up with the syncretistic nature of reality, seeing a fractal code of everything. You know, hey, some hey, bro, bro. That's my you, calling, you, yeah. Your explanation is gave me one more question because I'm actually an electrician too. So, you know, the second law of thermodynamics and everything, conservation of energy. So I'm, energy can't be created or destroyed. So, of course, your soul is eternal. But do you think you can, like, the energy gets created as something else? Like I heard you talking about the sperm, you know, biting the, the apple or the fruit, like going into the egg, that explosion. Like, do you like, so is that like transferring from, or is it just all like, or does you, do you ever transfer to something else or is it just all like? When you say transfer to something else, can you give me, clarify what you mean by that? So when you come to this world, you, you, first of all, our soul is all light, but when you come to this world, it's through your mother's uterus, your sperm, I mean, your father's sperm hitting the egg, which is you. But that's a transfer. You're not the same being you were when you hit that egg as you are in as an embryo. Or either you're not the same being as an embryo as you are as, you know, coming out as a fetus or a baby. Like, mm -hmm. is that transfer of energy or is it just like all the same thing? Like, is a caterpillar, a butterfly, is it the same thing? I guess because they so, go So listen, I'm just trying uh, to clarify. if you look at a butterfly, right, and you stare uh -huh. at his body... You'll notice uh -huh. it's just a caterpillar with wings. Okay, okay. So, so uh, I'm serious. Like, that may sound simple, but the butterfly body looked just like a caterpillar. Only thing it's that it, right, it, only thing it did was, was go into the cocoon to get wings. They got a movie like this called The Fly. Where this dude, this scientist went into this little machine. He, he knew how, then he came out with wings and shit. Like they, that's, they got so many ways to show this. Like when Superman go in the phone booth and he come out and he can fly. That's like the fly machine. That's like, I'm just saying when the soul enters the body, it's a, the sperm is like a larvae, a, a fucking mm -hmm. caterpillar. It's a caterpillar. And think about, just hear me out for a second, right? Just hear me out because sometime it'll bleep my word out with y'all. Amen in it, but much love. Watch this, right? A fly maggot is like a sperm cell. What does that fly maggot do? It goes inside of a body and be like a parasite. It'll go in a dead corpse and then it'll grow wings. It, it, it went inside of that dead body as a little white maggot but it'll mutate in that dead corpse and grow wings. Your sperm cell went inside of your body and your body started dying the moment it was born. Your body is a walking dead time bomb. It's, it was started dying. The mo you say we living. No, we not. We dying. Every day you getting closer to the grave. Earth is the realm of death. You ain't started living yet. Yo, you are really a fucking butterfly. Your life don't begin as a caterpillar. It began after your transformation. And this is what we are. So listen, check this out. 
just like a dead body serves as an incubator for a fly maggot to get his wings, your walking flesh package serves as a dead body that's decaying in real time as I speak. The kundalini is inside of your body. That's like a maggot inside of a carcass. And guess what? One day it's going to ferment and grow wings. And it's going to fly up out of your dead carcass like a fly maggot flew up out of a fucking dead carcass. Your kundalini is literally a maggot in your body that's using it like a fly maggot use a dead corpse just to get wings. Man, well, I appreciate that clarification. Now, one more thing and I'm out of here. The last one is, so how does your soul get into the larvae? Or how does your soul get into the sperm cell? Let me just sperm like that's what I'm trying okay, to Okay, like, I got a means. question, right? How did mm -hmm. the maggot get into the corpse? It was an egg dropped into the... the there the you go. Dropped the egg in there. there you oh, go. I, okay, I, I got you. I got you. There Damn, you that was go. Fire. <laughs> drop a bomb for that, please. Please drop a bomb. Damn. You just, I told y'all. I, I, I love this shit. 